for football. Capacity crowd of over 80,000. And one very special person here who has great ties to Texas and Derek Johnson. Here's Craig Sager with more. Well, we may see the best defensive player in college football today and Derek Johnson, the Texas linebacker. You know, he was compared favorably to Tommy Novus. The number one pick for the Atlanta Falcons in 1966 who has been with that organization for 39 years. Novus is here because Derek Johnson called him. He said, Mr. Novus, Coach Matt Brown keeps telling me I'm the next Tommy Novus. It'd be an honor to talk football with you and get a chance to meet you someday. Novus said, son, the Falcons are off this weekend. I'll be there Saturday. Now, Derek Johnson's mother is a math teacher, but he also has an appreciation for history. Right? All right, Craig Sager, Tommy Novus, number one draft pick from the Texas Longhorns. Mac Brown in his seventh year, 21st year overall, seven consecutive years. He's won at least nine games. He has had an incredible career here for the Texas Longhorns, and it continues in Les Miles. The former Michigan Wolverine in his fourth year was OSU's offensive coordinator back in 95 to 97, and he has done a great job as head coach of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Beautiful night here in Texas. You can't ask for better weather. Temperature about 77 degrees will probably be in the low 60s by the end of the game. Not very humid, just a slight breeze, and we've got clear skies. Texas won the toss. They decided to defer. Richmond McGee will kick it off. Robert Jones and Prentice Elliott back for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. When they've won games this year, Oklahoma State has a field position of about the 36-yard line. This is Jones. Breaks over the 25 to the 30. Richmond McGee to beat. Cuts it back to the 50, and he is going to be hauled down at the 46-yard line of Texas. Richmond McGee didn't make the stop. Robert Jones on the return. That is his longest of the year. And watch the block he gets coming right at you. Right there, boom, that opened it up. That block on number 22, Philip Giger of Texas, opened the lane, and then right there, Richmond McGee made him change pace. And that allowed the posse to come up and catch him, but terrific field position. What did you say it was, Ron, for Oklahoma State? When they play well, they start on their own 36-yard right. run. This is much better. They're on the plus 46. Field position has been key for this team. 53 yards on the return. Donovan Woods at quarterback, the redshirt freshman out of Millwood High School in Oklahoma City. Lorenzi stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Will probably lose a yard. Aaron Harris on the stop. Now that Oklahoma State offense, very complex, and it's the, in the hands of this redshirt freshman, Donovan Woods, but he has come a long way since that opener against UCLA. They had their playbook chopped down so much in that game because they didn't want the redshirt freshman to be overwhelmed. But when we talked with the quarterback coach and offense coordinator, Mike Gundy, he said he's absorbed everything. So they've gradually expanded it, and his play has increased and improved as a result. He just tucks it and runs. At the line of scrimmage, really no game. Let's take a look at our U.S. Army of One starting lineups. The rest of this offense for Oklahoma State. The offensive line is nasty. They're led by Corey Hilliard on the left tackle spot. And the running backs and wide receivers, Dewan Woods, older brother of Donovan Woods. That was Bill, that's Bill Badgerman, number 86, their tight end. He's one of their prime targets in these types of situations. Third down and 10. Texas brings five. Woods out into the flat. Pass is complete. It'll be short of the first down. They'll mark it about a yard short. Then he went back for Dewan Woods on the catch. The sophomore brother of Donovan Woods. And Donovan Woods, and, and, or I should say Donovan Woods, has started slowly in the first half, especially in the first quarter. He needs something like that for confidence. They always say that the speed of the game is real fast for him in the beginning, but he adjusts as time goes on. Tonight's not a night that they want him starting slowly against Texas. They can't afford to get down against the Longhorns. They're going to go for it. Four of seven on the year on fourth down, and they'll go from the eye. That means Marenzi is dotting the eye, the tailback. Lorenzi has daylight inside the 20 to the 10. Knocked out of bounds at about the three-yard line. What a great pitch by Donovan Woods to Vernon Morenci. 
two 34 great... yards on the pickup. Sorry, partner. Two great calls by Les Miles. One to go for it and two to call the option. Watch out on to the, to the right of your screen. Badgerman, number 86, the tight end. He set the corner with a great block on Terrell Brown, number five. And from that point on, Renzi had an open alley towards the end zone before he was finally run down by Giger, the free safety, number 22. We want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goal post cam. You're in good hands with Allstate. First and goal from the three. Lorenzi hit hard at the four yard line. Derek Johnson was in on the pile, but Michael Huff made the stop. Let's take a look at that Texas defense that held Colorado to three yards rushing. Oklahoma State's already bettered that. Larry Dibbles, big dibs. He's gotten better at every game. In the linebacker spot, Derek Johnson, the best linebacker in the country. When he gets to the ball, he gets there mad. Into the secondary. Michael Huff at strong safety. Four of his five career interceptions have gone for touchdowns. Second and goal. Now they're at the four. Straight ahead, the fullback. Touchdown, Julius Crossland. The red shirt freshman's first touchdown of his career. What a tendency breaker, too. Everyone keying on number 33, Vernon Morenci. And they hand it off inside to the fullback, almost as if the defense was going to bypass the fullback on their way to the tailback. But guess what? He had the ball. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Now, Greg Robinson, former defensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs, will make some adjustments on that because they made it look easy. The extra point is good. Well, the game was started out by somebody who has been very special here in Texas. Lance Armstrong, six-time Tour de France winner, was for the sixth consecutive year honorary captain for the coin toss. Here's Craig Sager with more. Well, as honorary captain in an Austin native, you kind of surprised that Oklahoma State marched right down and scored on the Longhorns. Yeah, that wasn't what we had planned out this uh, this afternoon, but that's all right. It's early. You're known as possibly the greatest athlete on the planet physically. How tough is it mentally to prepare for something as grueling as the Tour de France? Well, it depends. I mean, when you get into it, and you get a few years into it, and you start to get some experience, and you start to really know what you're doing, it's it's not that tough. I get nervous every year. I mean, I still get I still get butterflies, which I think is what. What tells me I need to keep coming back and doing it, but you know it's it's a long race, so you don't need to panic. You got three weeks. If you have a bad day, you know you got 20 other days to make it up. You say keep coming back. There's an article in a French newspaper today that said possibly you would not compete next year. What's the real story on that? Well, I said that I would probably use the year to focus on other objectives, but but I've also always said that I will do another tour. So if I don't race in 05, I'll, I'll definitely be back in 06 for the tour. And congratulations on your bracelet and all the money you've raised for cancer. It's been tremendous. Thank you. We, we I thought we'd sell maybe a million, and we've done 22 million now. It just keeps going, and uh, people have been great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. All right, one of the greatest athletes ever. After the kick, Texas will down it in their end zone, take over first and 10. From their own 20, Texas offense number two in the country rushing the football. Vince Young, 6'5", a redshirt freshman. He's coming off his best week of practice, Charles. We were here on Thursday and watched him throw the ball in team situations. And normally when you see what we call routes versus air, where they throw it and there's no defense, guys are awfully accurate. This time there were defenders. He was that accurate in that drill. That gives Mac Brown and Greg Davis offensive coordinator a lot of hope that this young man is continuing to mature and improve his throwing. Only the second time this year that Texas has trailed in the first quarter. The first was last week versus Colorado. Benson and Will Matthews in the eye for the Longhorns. Benson tries to get to the outside, tripped up at the 21-yard line. The rest of that Texas offense, the line combined 111 career starts between them. Justin Blaylock at right tackle. He is the technician of the group. And the running back and wide receiver spot. Keep an eye on the fullback. Will Matthews, he's nicknamed Headache. Blocks for his best friend, Cedric Benson. Doesn't get the pub, but this guy does the dirty work, and he's good at what he does. And remember, he's Headache because he gives them. That's right. <laughs> Two tight ends, Thomas and Scape. Benson tries to get to the outside, crosses the 25. They'll mark it at about the 29-yard line. 
as we take a look at that Oklahoma State defense who have a slim margin of error tonight. And on the line, Clay Coe, the senior out of Edmond, Oklahoma, he's been the most consistent. In the linebacker spot, Lawrence Pinson in the middle, he is the shark on defense. And in the secondary, Derek Williams, back from injury, didn't play the last four games. They need him not only for defense, but also for returns on punts. He was out with a broken forearm, getting his first game action back, as you mentioned, in four games. Third and short here. Vince Young has been effective with a quarterback sneak all year in this situation. Benson is just tiptoe, puts his head down, and he's going to be close, but he should have got up to the 30, and that's where they're going to mark it. So it'll be first and 10 for Mac Brown and the Texas Longhorns. You look at Mac Brown's streak, 26 and 1, following the loss to Oklahoma over the last five years. And if you take Oklahoma out, they're 31 and 1 against the rest of the Big 12. That's pretty stout. It just tells you how important the Oklahoma game is for Texas because that loss, in most years, has shattered their dream of winning the Big 12 South outright and going on. They've gotten to the Big 12 title game once with Mac Brown. They want to get back there and win it. Seven nothing, the Cowboys lead. First and ten from the 31. Young will put it up for the first time. Has a man at the 39 yard line. Complete the Tony Jeffrey, the senior out of Houston, Clyde Forest High School. How about an update on Cal Oregon? Here's a I think there's somebody from the Dallas Cowboys that could probably relate to that from a Super Bowl a few years back. <laughs> Mr. Smith. And off. Will Matthews, a big fullback out of just across town at Westwood High School here in Austin. And that's unfortunate when you talk about that. Jackie Smith is a Hall of Fame tight end. And unfortunately, that's what people remember most about him. And that's that's too bad. If you look at Mac Brown, the head coach of the Texas Longhorns, has to like what he's seeing early in the ball game in terms of his offense. A little bit surprised, I'm sure, that Oklahoma State just took the ball and ran it right down the field yeah. and scored initially on Texas. Greg Robinson working on adjustments as we speak. Oklahoma State runs a 4-2-5 alignment on defense. Young will swing it out of the flat to Ramos Taylor. He crosses the 50, showing his speed. The true freshman inside the 20, down to the 10-yard line. Ramos Taylor out of Temple, Texas. We saw this in practice on Thursday. They wanted to get this freshman the ball more. He played some receiver in high school. Watch the block right there. Tony Jeffrey on the corner. That allowed Taylor to get to the sideline. And then downfield gets a second block from number four, Lima Swede. Great job by the wide receivers of Texas, helping out the running back to get him downfield. 44 yards on the pickup, only his second reception of the year. Benson. Gets down to about the eight-yard line, following behind that big line of Jason Glenn at center, Casey Stuttered at left guard, Jonathan Scott at left tackle, Mac McWhorter. He has raised these guys in time. Over. He has, and he's really brought them along. And you go back to when you go back to that throw that Vince Young made a play ago. It, do, it wasn't one of those big bombers downfield. It wasn't the 20-yard out that gets everyone ooing and eyeing. But the job that he did, swinging it out, putting it in the perfect spot for the back to run with the ball after the catch. That's a big time throw. Doesn't seem like it, but it is. Second and goal from the seven. Benson cuts up to the five. Ducks his head. Touchdown, Texas. Last week against Oklahoma, Oklahoma State had a lot of missed tackles. Right here, number 23, Jamie Thompson, one of their better tacklers, missed Cedric Benson one-on-one -on -one in the hole. And when he missed, that allowed Benson to get upfield. And once he gets his shoulders square and rumbles downfield, well, you see the end result. 58 career touchdowns, 35 games he has scored that ties the NCAA record. And we are tied. So much for grinded out football. We played less than seven minutes and we're tied at seven. Home State Cowboys for only the second time in the last five games have scored in the opening quarter. They have scored only 20 points combined in the last three games in the first half. Maybe they have gotten off that as we are tied at seven. McGee will kick it away again. Jones and Elliott. 
Jones already with one big kickoff return tonight. Side winding kick will go out of the end zone. Everybody here keeping the eye on the Oklahoma Texas A&M game here. Out of the woods just keeps it. Up to the 28 yard line. Derek Johnson with his first tackle of the night, the big senior out of Waco, Texas. But Sam Mays coming around. Boom, big fella, 76, just pulling and leading. It's almost like running a toss sweep to a tailback, but instead it's just almost, it becomes single wing. Quarterback and shotgun just takes it and runs a sweep. You'll see that from Texas tonight also. Sweep play, stretch play with the quarterback. And there's Sam Mays, they're all Big 12 linemen. What a great player he is. Out of Austin Town, Ohio. Prentice Elliott wide to the left for the Cowboys. Second and short. Morenci gets the first down as he jumps over the 30-yard line to the 32-yard line. Fans, this telecast is available with Spanish translation via the SAP button on your remote control. Vernon Morenci, a junior out of Miami, Florida, already speculation, are you coming back? He said, yes, I'm coming back in 05. I want that diploma. It's special for my mom, and I'm going to be part of the Cowboys next year. But people's skepticism centers on the fact that he played baseball for two or three years before, and he's a little bit older. They think he'll go into the draft, but when you say you're going to promise mom, got to usually <laughs> keep that promise. From the shotgun. Looks left, throws right out of the flat to Morenci. Skips one tackle, gets over the 40, still dancing, now he has daylight. Kiss him goodbye. To the 20, 10, touchdown, Cowboys. His third reception of the year, 68 yards. Watch Donovan Woods. He fakes one way and throws back to the other side. The key to this is that Morenci made a lot of guys miss. There's Philip Huff missing. Giger in the hole missing. Huff again. And then he slips another one. And now he has a picket fence of blockers back across the field. The only one who almost prevented him from getting in, Derek Johnson. DJ almost ran him down. When Greg Robinson became defensive coordinator at Texas, he said, we will be the best tackling team in the Big 12. They didn't show it on that play. 14-7, OSU. The Cowboys lost to Oklahoma last week, 38-35. People were wondering if they would have a hangover so far tonight in the opening quarter. They have it. Bernie Morenci, the big touchdown reception, have given the Cowboys the 14-7 lead. 12th touchdown this season, but first receiving only That's only his third reception of the year. I was going to say, it's only the third time he's caught the ball all year. Another dimension being shown tonight by Oklahoma State with their star tailback, Vernon Morenci. Old Farden's kick, end over end. From the goal line. Up to about the 16-yard line, Ramon Taylor. Let's take a look at the touchdown. Where was the breakdown, Charles? Well, the breakdown is the fact that they just could not tackle Vernon Morenci. Fake one way and came back the other. Here's an opportunity right there. One miss there by, by uh, Philip Huff. Another miss inside. That was Aaron Harris, number two. Geeger, number 22. Huff missing again. And then once he slipped through, look at what he has in front. Prentice Elliott, number 11. Yeah, you know, he had 75 out in front also. And then Derek Johnson tried to run him down, but Morenci got to the pylon and Oklahoma State's up seven. Yeah, Texas practices tackling live every week. Yes, at least one time per week. A lot of teams this late in the season don't do that due to injuries and worried about it, but they like to do it. Didn't show up on that play. Benson picks up a yard. Here's Craig Sager. Craig. You guys were talking about the effect that the tight loss would have on Oklahoma State. I talked to Coach Miles. What the coaching staff did is, hey, we have to build this team up. They took the tape from Saturday night. They met on Sunday. They put the tape together. They showed the team all the bad plays they made first and then talked about how they weren't aggressive, pointed out the differences. Then they said, but guys, here's how close we were. Then they showed them the good plays and the good tapes. They said, take tomorrow off. Tuesday, let's get ready for Texas. Great, great idea by Les Miles, and it's working tonight. No effects of the Oklahoma game being shown so far by Oklahoma State. Pass complete up to the 22-yard line. Bo Scape, the big tight end on the reception. 
you know, if Les Miles wants to broaden himself a little bit, he may want to go into psychology. You know, <laughs> of course, all coaches will tell you they are part psychologists anyway, because you have to be to motivate a group of 18 to 22 year olds, some a little bit older, some a little bit younger. They're trying to get them all going in the same direction all the time. Not easily done, especially with the distractions they have in this society and going to school. He's done a fantastic job in Stillwater. Third down. Woods looking into the flat, going to get hit from behind, almost lost the football, and he did lose it. They're going to have to unpile it. Randy Cristal getting in there. It'll be fourth down. Texas had it. Vince Young was carrying that like a loaf of bread. Last week, he lost a fumble like this against Colorado, but one of his linemen fell on it. Casey stuttered. And, excuse me, or Vince, Gl Jason Glenn fell on it last week and kept it from being a very bad play. This time, Vince Young able to get it back himself. Backside pressure knocked it free. How about Oklahoma State now? Up seven and forcing Texas to punt from deep in their territory. They should get excellent field position here. Back to Oklahoma State. back to get Richmond McGee's kick, who has been outstanding the last four games. And this is a high spiral. Elliott back at the 35, ran right by the coverage. Missed another tackle. Penalty flags are thrown all over the place. Somebody got hit in the back at about the 33-yard line. 50 yards on the punt by McGee. I think David Thomas, the starting tight end, was clipped on that play, and that's why it'll go deep against Oklahoma State. Watch to your right. See Thomas, number 16? Bingo, right there. And the fans the even saw it. Yeah, everyone caught that one. Ended up taking the hit on that play. As Greg Jones, who's a third string tailback with the clip. The officials are talking. Here's Randy Cristal, our referee tonight. Illegal block in the back. Number 27 during the return. It'll be a 10 yard penalty. First and 10. And we're going to take a break. 449 to play in the first. Les Miles and the Cowboys lead by the bowl game. And Les Miles, head coach Oklahoma State, started his career at Michigan. Now his quarterback has started slowly in the first half. You can see against OU, against Missouri, and against AM. Tonight he's two for two, 77 yards throwing and a touchdown. And always finished strong. Now they're hoping to get the complete game out of him. Little shifting, both tight ends shifting over from one side to the other. Tight end trade, they call it. Lorenzi. Now take that Seymour Shaw. Tripped up as he gets up to about the 24-yard line. No gain on the play. Derek Johnson in on that. Johnson, the senior out of Waco, Texas, semifinalist for the Lombardi Award, the Butkus Award, had a chance to go to the NFL last year, turned it down. Matt Brown has never lost a player early to the NFL. Derek Johnson said, I still had some business to do here in Texas. Yeah, he came back wanting to win a Big 12 and a national championship. He made a nice play, got a lot of help on the corner force from number five, Terrell Brown, on the last play. To about the 27 yard line. Derek Johnson is the one who penetrated on that. Our first and 10 line tonight is brought to you by Home Depot. And they need to get to about the 34 yard line. Texas would sure love to get off the field on third down this time. First two drives have resulted in Oklahoma State touchdowns. The Texas defense has to find a way off the field and try and get a little bit of a settled feeling. Right now, a little bit off balance. Third down, we'll call it eight. And we've got flags again. Felt like Oklahoma State jumped into a bunch formation, had a lot of movement before the ball was snapped. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 78. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remain third down. We're seeing more movement in this series out of Oklahoma State before the snap of the ball shifts, motion, alignment adjustments. We expected to see that right from the beginning. We did in the first two series. Now we're seeing it. Unfortunately, that time it cost them. They didn't hold their, hold their position long enough. 
Although motion anywhere from 50 to 60 times during a game. They're trying to get the defense back on its heels, making checks and thinking. There's again another shift to another bunch formation. Third down at 13. Texas only rushes three. Donovan Woods, plenty of time. Here comes some pressure. Has to step up in a pocket. Almost intercepted at the 30-yard line, and we've got a penalty flag. Terrell Brown, the sophomore from Mesquite, Texas, had it right in his hands. And it looked like the ball bounced into the uh, Texas bench, and somebody hit it. The th flag was thrown by the referee. Personal yeah. foul. Roughing the passer. Oh. Number 49. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. This is not going to make Greg Robinson or Mac Brown happy because they had them stopped. Donovan, Donovan Woods made a bad decision at the end of the play, and Eric Hall also made oh, a yeah. bad decision coming in at the end of that play. He put the big hit on him, but the ball was obviously gone. And they had him stopped. They would have yeah. gotten the ball in that possession. Now they've got to go back out and start over. First set of downs for Oklahoma State. Hall, the junior out of Clarksville, Tennessee. Donovan Woods goes over to the bench. I'm not sure if he's got some cobwebs in there. But they're going to have to call a timeout. 2.51 to play in the first quarter. Two of the last three trips to Austin, the games have been close for the Cowboys and the Longhorns. And right now, Oklahoma State leads 14-7. Donovan Woods just told Coach Miles, I'm all right, I'm going back in. Al Pena put his helmet back down and the baseball cap back on. Here's the hit that caused it. That's a denture check there, isn't it? Yes, it is. And essentially what they did, Donovan Woods is a very tough kid coming back in the game, but Texas bailed Oklahoma State out on that play because it would have been fourth down and they would have had to pump the ball away. Instead, they get to start grinding the ball a little bit again. Well, they hit him in the head. That's why the penalty was called. Seymour Shaw in. Morency for the second week in a row. Not in. Shaw stacked at the 35-yard line. Morency only 17 carries against Oklahoma, and there were a lot of questions. Why didn't he carry the ball more in that first half against the Sooners? And Les Miles said, we were in second and long, third and long. We didn't have uh, any place for him. But you have to wonder why isn't Morenci in there right now? Yeah, and the question that arose was that he, well, he's averaging over five yards per carry, and you've shown patience all year long in the run game, meaning second and long doesn't daunt you. You continue yeah. to run the football and run it. But, you know, it's hard to argue with a team that loses a game at the buzzer by three against the number two ranked right. team in the country. They know what they're doing on that sideline. Second down at 11. Passes tip. That is an incomplete pass. They were looking for Prentice Elliott, the true freshman. It looked like he was pulling it back maybe on this. Partner, this is a lateral. Watch where the ball's thrown. Oh, yeah. You're See where it's supposed right. to be going? Very fortunate on it. Now, where I give the break to the officials is that the intention was to lateral the ball, but by the time yeah. he was hit where the ball was thrown, it ended up hitting the back of a lineman, which allows them to say, hold a second, forward pass. If that ball had not gotten hit That's and right. whistled through, it definitely would have been a lateral. So before I go diving with both feet, jumping with both feet on the officials, I think they, I think they had it right. They got it right, but it was close. Third down and 11 for the Cowboys. Number two in the Big 12 on third down conversions. And Woods is going to have to burn a timeout. Second timeout they've used on this drive. No, it's a delay of game against Texas. They didn't get the timeout called in time. So what they should do is just run back to the huddle and say, okay, then our timeout doesn't count, correct? That's right. We don't want the timeout. Keep the two timeouts here. Now it's five yards. Texas now has them in long yardage situation again. But this is where you want Oklahoma State when you have a quarterback who throws the deep ball better than the mid-range ball. Woods in motion. Texas is confused about what to do. That's Tim Crowder, number 80. They didn't go to the nickel. Crowder running back on the field to rush. The pressure on Woods, and he makes the tackle back at the 27-yard line. Comes in late and makes the play. Ron, he was running off the field. He thought he was coming out. He thought it was a nickel situation. You look at Greg Robinson saying, we're fortunate on this one. 
Watch, right here, that's Tim Crowder. He's being sent back into the game because he thought he was supposed to come off. Now watch him rush the passer. I guess when you get to jog 30 yards yeah. before the snap, it gets your body in motion pretty well, doesn't it? <laughs> That's it. Especially when you've got a body like Crowder's at 255 pounds. Looks a little bigger than that. We've got flags on the on the field. <laughs> he, he gave new meaning to running start yeah. on that play, didn't he? Yeah. Cole Farden wants to try to kick it away. Farden, the grandson of former Oklahoma State great Neil Armstrong, not the astronaut. Prior to the snap, offside. Defense. The defense was in the neutral zone, causing the offense to move. Fourth down. Are you talking about the same Neil Armstrong who later became the head coach of the Chicago Bears? Absolutely. He was an assistant with the Dallas Cowboys for a while. One of the nicest men you'll ever meet in your life. And he actually took the Bears to a playoff appearance, I believe, during his time there, during the time the Bears were struggling as an organization. Aaron Ross standing back at his own 30-yard line. Did you see what Texas was doing, waving their arms? It's called punch safe. Meaning don't try for the block. Let's just make sure we ensure we get the catch. And Ross muffs it, gets hit immediately back at the 27-yard line. Here's Ernie Johnson, and it was no offense, Charles, but what is up with Tennessee? Well, when you get two quarterbacks hurt in two weeks and you're playing a guy that you did not want to play, there's your end result. Straight up the middle, Benson had 22 yards prior to that carry. Crosses the 45 up to about the 46-yard line of the market. Pick up of 19 on the play. Zone play inside, and what they did on that one was they almost turned it into an eye formation play by the motion of Cedric Benson, moving from side to side to moving upfield. Because what happens when you run a lot of zone plays, you run too much side to side and you don't get the same force and power. That time Cedric Benson did. Big run. The keeper by Young. He's got some daylight. The 6-5. Sophomore crosses the 30 down to the 27 yard line. That's what we said at the top of the show. He is so dangerous running the football, especially on that little belly play. All right, now this is the counter to that. Right here, fake inside. Then Vince Young is going to go right here, find the hole. Before, remember the last play? Handed it inside to Cedric Benson. This time it's the counter. If the defensive end crashes down, the Vince Young pulls it out and keeps it. It's another form of the option, this time out of the shotgun formation. Both of them very dangerous in the backfield. And Bill Clay, defensive coordinator at Oklahoma State, said that's the, one of the plays they were very concerned about. Now we have some more jumping around. That's a good point. They're so concerned about it, they've added it to their repertoire with Donovan mm -hmm. Woods. <laughs> and, and this it's Cowboy an excellent play. And this Cowboy defense is not Fire athletic. Snap. False start. Number 63 offense. It remains first down. It's not an athletic offense, and that's why Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator, spends so much time not sh exactly telling them what to do, but showing them how to be in the position to be successful, and that defense of the Cowboys can't be out of position. Yeah, and that's what he talked about with us when we, when we discussed the, the game and the game plan. You've got to tell them, show them what you want them to do, tell them how you want it to get it done, and get them to do it each day in practice so it translates into the ball game. Penalty was against Texas, first and 15. And we're jumping again. Everybody getting a little antsy tonight. And last penalty win against Justin Blaylock, number 63, their best offensive lineman, their best technician. Let's see where, who gets this one. I think David Thomas, man. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 16, it's a five-yard penalty and remains first down. Well, Mac wants a little explanation. And you know what, Max discussing what's going on, but right now you know what has to happen? See that guy right there, the quarterback? Mm -hmm. He's got to take the huddle now. He's got to really take over the huddle. All right, fellas. All right, now, let's calm ourselves down. Let's get it together. Let's run the offense where we're supposed to run it. He needs to be a calming influence on the other 10 guys. He's the leader. That's what he's done the last two games. Four rushing touchdowns versus Texas Tech. One of his most complete games of the year. Pulls it out of Benson's gut, looking deep, throwing the ball. The line is sweet, overthrown. They're going to call it an inter interception, and it is. Daniel McLemore, the junior out of Duncanville, Texas, over the shoulder with his first interception. What a great play by McLemore, number four who stood in for Darren Williams while he was out for four ball games and played well in his stead. Looks like he's the receiver, doesn't it? He has such great coverage. He's ahead of Lima Swede, catches the football, watches he catches it, and then watches feet. There's the catch, one foot down, 
Yeah, really almost got two feet down. Excellent call by the officials. Great catch by McLemore and a drive snuffed out by the Oklahoma State defense. He's only five foot seven. He was going up against six foot five Lima Swede. And now the Cowboys will take over first and ten from their own 20. Final 24 seconds of the first. Terrific coverage. Lorenzi is back into the lineup. Donovan Wood stretches as he hands him the football and he gets up to the 25 yard line. Michael Huff, the junior out of Irving, Texas, Nimitz High School on the stop. That's Morenci's fifth carry of the night. He has 42 yards already. And that should do it here in quarter number one. Watch the holding. So the Oklahoma State Cowboys got on the score along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager. I'm Rob Hewitt. Welcome you back to Austin, Texas, where the Cow or the Longhorns have won eight straight and 27 of the last 28 games as we start quarter number two. Second down and five for the Cowboys. All on their own 25-yard line. Play action pass. Woods steps up, throws, pass complete to DeLon Woods. Crosses the 45, and he is going to be gang tackled at about the 48-yard line. Pick up a 24 on the play. Now the first quarter numbers a little bit interesting. How about 130 total yards for Oklahoma State in that opening quarter? They moved the ball effectively. And how about the passing yards, 77? You know, a lot of that came on Morenci with the kind of the screen pass outside, and he turned it into a big run. But they're doing a great job on the ground. The penalties for both about even. Everything pretty well even. But you have to feel that Oklahoma State has the momentum advantage right now after the Absolutely. last interception. Oklahoma State, a 108th in passing in the country. The pitch to Morenci. And the Texas Longhorns are right there to stop him after a gain of about a yard. Eric Hall, Tim Crowder coming around to make the stop. All trying to do a little make good after that costly <laughs> penalty. One of the tough things to do against the Texas defense is to run wide because they run so well themselves. A lot of team speed on both sides of the ball for Texas, but the defense tends to run you down if you run parallel too long. That's what happened on that play. We'll call it second and eight. Woods will change the play. He does it a bunch. Two to snap. Just gets it off. Keeps it. Breaks tackles again, lowers his head as he gets down to the 41 yard line. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of the University of Texas, a member of the Big 12 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the University of Texas or the Big 12 Conference. If not, we will send Bebo to your house. <laughs> you know, oftentimes when a quarterback takes a big hit, such as Donovan Woods did earlier, it shakes him up. It seems to have focused him even more. He's playing very well and running his offense skillfully here in the first half. Third down and one. Renzi hit at the line, right at the line. Right in our Home Depot first and ten line. Roderick Wright stuffed him up. He had some help from a bunch of people, including Neil Tweedy. Good job by Texas holding at the point of attack. Meaning they held the line of scrimmage, a counter play. Good penetration by Tweedy 87 and Roderick Wright, number 90. For the first time, 100% healthy this season. Mm -hmm. We talked with him on Thursday after practice. He said, it's the best I've felt since we started preseason camp. And he played very well on that one. It's called a circle tackle in Greg Robinson's parlance. What he means by that is a guy who sheds a block and makes the tackle. They give you a circle tackle grade on that one, which is a plus for him. Roger Wright has done a great job with that. 15 of them over the last four games since he missed the Baylor game and part of Rice with the national injury. Okay, if you're Oklahoma okay. State, you have a running back like Lorenzi and a quarterback like Woods that you go. Left now has got to go. You go. Field position is not, you know, field position's okay. It's not great in terms of, you know, having Texas pin. But, you know, I would go for it with it with their, with their running attack right now. Tell your offensive line, go get it. Texas with nine in the box. They give it to the fullback, straight ahead running. Sean Willis, the junior out of Flatonia, Texas, one of the strongest players on this team. 
bench is about 500 pounds. Better known as a blocker, and they got the first down. You know, both teams have great fullbacks. You think of Willis, obviously, for Oklahoma State. Will Matthews. That has led to the success of the Bensons and the Morenzis of the world. Yeah, nice call by Les Miles. It shows a lot of confidence in his offensive line. And you're right, the fullbacks for both of these teams have been key factors in the tailbacks being sprung for big yardage. And when they can carry the ball as they both can, what a bonus you have. Two tight ends, Badgema and Johnson. Woods keeps. Flips tackles again as he gets inside the 30 down to the 28 yard line. I've lost count how many tackles Texas has missed tonight. A bunch of them, but they chopped a nice hole in their defensive front. They're going to pull the guard. Watch it, pull the tackle on this play. Look at that leading up in the hole. Kellen Davis, number 78. But he had a nice hole to run through as he came around when he pulled from his tackle position. At the top of the game, we highlighted the fact there's been negative 14 yards rushing the last two games for Texas's defense. 76 yards already tonight. Another first down for the Cowboys. And they'll keep grinding it out. This is a stubborn offensive line for the Cowboys, and I say that in a good sense. They don't care if you put eight, nine, seven, Bevo in the box. They believe they can run it against you no matter what. And when we talk with Mike Gundy, the offensive coordinator, he said if we're even in the box, I mean, if we have the same number of guys to block what's in the box, we will run the ball every time. Our offensive line says if you want to add one, you want to add two, you want to add three, we'll run it anyway. But anytime it's even and what they try and do in their offensive scheme is motion and shift and adjust to try and make it even in the box to equal things out in the running game. And tonight, they're doing a great job of it. Second down and eight. Woods will go from the shotgun. And they run it. Inside the 25-yard line. College football on TBS continues next Saturday. Close today against Cal. Had a big lead. Let it get away and still almost had a chance on their last drive. This is the 10th play of the drive. Third down and five. Remember, option works for them earlier tonight. Play action. Into the flat. Complete. Julius Crossland gets the first down as he gets inside the 15 down to the 11. Crossland, the redshirt freshman, only his second reception of the year. Hey, watch the fullback right here. This is right here. This is Crossland, right? Watch what he's going to do. He's going to run a little arrow route right up, right up to the top, and boom, he just bypasses the block, gives it to him right there. Great job, a 10-yard pickup for Oklahoma State and another first down. You talk about tendency breakers. They've done it tonight with their fullback. They've run the fullback twice in situations you thought the tailback would get it. This time they used him in the pass game. First and 10. Lorenzi straight up. Has the daylight. Touchdown, Cowboys. Thirteen yards, barely went touched in that. His second touchdown of the night. Watch the fullback leading right there. See him leading the hole, and when he gets to Derek Johnson, number 11, and puts the block on him, there's enough gap for Morenci to dance into the end zone. And Oklahoma State has a chance to go up 14 points with an extra point added here. This is a shocker. The extra point is good. Les Miles team has come on with a vengeance. Only 20 points combined in the first half of the last three games. They have 21 tonight. Stevie Ray Vaughan, the late great Stevie Ray Vaughan, made his home here in Austin, Texas. Right now, he'd be crying because his Longhorns trail the Cowboys 21 to 7. Texas is the only team that Les Miles has not beaten in Big 12 play. But they have looked just like a well oiled machine today. Harden kicks it away. Another side winding kick. It'll be about nine yards deep. Let's take a look at that touchdown again. Well, take a look at the fullback here, all right? This is Sean Willis. What he does is he motions out this way and then comes back hard here to place the block. It's a counter play for Morenci, and then he follows through there. Touchdown. Watch how, watch how they do it. They motion him and then coming back hard across the formation. Boom. He takes the block on the All-American, De De Derek Johnson. 
And then Morenci has a gap. Look at this. Watch 37. As he leads into the hole. Right there. Great job. Stays on his feet. Gets the block down. Morenci skips through. Oklahoma State's up two touchdowns. All right, here's Cedric Benson, 42 yards already, and he is going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard. Morenci was 62 yards on 10 carries. And Texas is just going to be patient. They don't want to get out and try to be something they're not, and they're not a throwing football team. That's a great point because it's only two touchdowns. That's right. With nine minutes to go in the second quarter, a lot of football left to be played. Greg Davis, the offense coordinator, said exactly that to us in our meeting. Know your strengths, be true to who you are, and play to those strengths. Running the football is what, gets, or what has gotten Texas here to this stage of the season. And they averaged 40 points during this eight-game home win streak. Pass is tipped up in the air, intercepted Cowboys. Padgett McGee comes down with his first interception of the year on a tip pass and the second interception for Vince Young. And this is a big, sudden change play. The Texas defense has to go on the field until really it rise up. Watch Vince Young trying to get it right down the middle. Great play inside. Clay Coe looked That's like Clay Co, I believe, number 96 from, from uh, Oklahoma State. Docks it in the air. Padgett McGee, number 41, the linebacker, gets it. Great job by the defensive line, coached by Kerry Bailey. <laughs> What he does is he teaches them to get their penetration when you're stopped and the ball is thrown. Put your hands up in the passing lane. Exactly what Coe did. The ball was tipped up. Big play for Oklahoma State. Let's see if they try and strike quickly here. You can see the turnover margin that Oklahoma State tied for first at plus 16. On first and 10 from the 20. Straight ahead running. Seymour Shaw down to the goal line. They'll mark it at the one. Seymour Shaw to Shawnee, Oklahoma, was a very coveted recruit when he came to Oklahoma State, but injuries have plagued him throughout his career. You talked about how nasty and tough the Oklahoma State offensive line has been. They have been that, and on that play, Seymour Shaw made a great cutback, and Larry Dibbles, number 92, was unable to make the tackle. But watch the line. They're getting great push up front, allowing Shaw to get into the second and the third level of the defense, the linebackers in the secondary. On the sneak. Wait for the signal. Looks like the officials are going to put it right at the... Up oh, there it is. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Donovan Woods sneaks it in on the rushing touchdown. Doesn't get much simpler than this. Snap the ball, wedge through, and he follows over the right side. Number 76, Sam Mays, and right behind his center, number 69, Chris Aiken. Just chopped the hole open, and he slid through for the touchdown. His 11th rushing touchdown of the year. The extra point is good. And Oklahoma State with over 200 yards here on the campus of the University of Texas. They bathe it in orange when they win conference games and conference championships. But right now, that's the man of the hour. Donovan Woods has done an exceptional job leading this Cowboy offense. Just totally dismantling a Texas defense that has played so well the last few games. And they're not going to return this one either. Field position, we told at the top of the show, that's what's happening. Here's Craig Sager. Well, Ron, I've been over by the Oklahoma State coaches at the beginning of the game. They kept saying, hey, we've got to get off to a great start. Got to get off to a great start, which they did. Then they came back and said, listen, we have to keep the push pressure on, keep the pressure on. Then it went from great job, guys, to actually the word amazing being used by the coaches on the sidelines. Vince Young had his career high a year ago at Stillwater. However, they looked at tape of that game. They said, listen, guys, if you put him in a position to throw, we have an advantage. He doesn't have Roy Williams anymore to catch those passes. Absolutely. But he does have his legs. Breaks a couple of tackles, gets the first down up to about the 33-yard line for Vince Young out of Madison High School in Houston. 13-2 as two is a starter. And a great point by Craig, the progression tonight for Oklahoma State's coaches and what they're telling their players is the progression that they wanted to have. They got off to the great start. The guy's been playing with a lot of effort, resourcefulness. That's the word that Bill Clay, the defensive mm -hmm. coordinator, used when he talked about his defense with us. And we've seen that with the forced turnovers this evening. 
He'll just keep it again. Vince Young just scoops up to about the 35 yard line. Well, they're consistent. That they are. And, and, and consistency for Texas now goes back to what we said at the beginning of the last series. They still need to be true to who they are, which is running That's the right. football. What they're going to need now is help from their defense because a running team can't do this and catch up unless they get some stops on defense. And they're not getting what they normally get from Greg Robinson's crew thus far tonight. We'll see what they can do about making adjustments and coming back. But a lot of it has to do with Oklahoma State and their scheme tonight. It's awfully good. Seven minutes to play in the half. Benson on the keeper. And the Oklahoma State defense just stacks him up and then pushes him back. Darnell Smith, the sophomore out of San Antonio, Texas, Taft High School, led the charge. The drama of the NBA returns to TNT next to seven now for the Longhorns. And Texas, excuse me, Oklahoma State plays a 4-2-5, so they don't have to substitute to get into their nickel package. Their DBs are already on the field. Woods had his last pass batted down. Now he's in trouble, and he is going to be dropped at the line of scrimmage. Another outstanding job by this Oklahoma State defense. Jerry Don Bray, the junior out of Chickasha, Oklahoma, on the stop. And he needs to go to the sidelines and high five his linebackers in secondary. That was a coverage sack. There's absolutely no one open on that play. Nowhere for Vince Young to go with the football. Allowed Jerry Don to get to the quarterback. Prentice Elliott standing back at about his 22 yard line. McGee has a punt at 50 already tonight. Good snapper comes the pressure up the middle. Not a good kick. It'll be short. And they're just going to let it roll and finally down at about the 29 yard line. 34 yards on the kick. Beautiful night for football, but right now the Texas Longhorns find themselves down by a thousand are thinking about this score 28 to 7 and Donovan <laughs> Woods leading Oklahoma State to that 21 point advantage. They said Halloween was last week, wasn't it? Yeah. What's this trick or treat that's going on here for the Longhorns? How about that? 8.3 yards of play for the Oklahoma State Cowboys who have dominated time of possession and everything. And another missed tackle by Texas and another one. This is probably the most important defensive possession of this opening half for the Texas Longhorns. Dare say the season if they want to accomplish what they want, what, what they plan to. Watch Morenci here. First missed tackle in the backfield. And then he's able to break it outside. Look at him carrying the ball. It's not the way to carry it at home, young people. Tuck it, tuck it away. And he did when contact came. A big 15-yard gain. Texas, we've talked about how much they don't throw the football and, and they don't throw it that well. I don't think they can afford to be down 35 to 7 at the half and try and come back against Oklahoma State. They need to stop them here. Five minutes to play in the half. Morenci again trying the short side of the field that he has hit right upside the face. Good hit by Cedric Griffin. He's having a big night matching himself up against Cedric Benson, two of the best players in the country at their position. 82 yards rusher. 68 yards receiving for Morenci. That's second and five. Woods keeps it. Tries to get to the 50-yard line. This time he is gang tackled, but he's still able to drag some defenders down to the 47-yard line. We'll set up the third down at about two. Derek Johnson on the stop. And these running, the running backs and the quarterback for Oklahoma State, Morenci in particular, and of course Donovan Woods, are almost turning into, into Houdini when they're carrying the football. They're one second, gone the next. They're forcing a lot of missed tackles by the Texas Longhorns. Phillip Geiger had a chance to put him down. He evaded him and got downfield and made it third and short. Third down and one. Looks like jumping on the part of Oklahoma State, the left side. Oh, boy. And I oh think they boy. were going for a big play there, too. I think they were going to throw the football. Well, the Donovan Woods was Hard in motion. Snap. I think he's on the tight end. Offense, number 80. Yeah, the Charlie. Five-yard penalty. It was Charlie Johnson third down. on the near side. That was Charlie Johnson. Yep. But what he was doing, see right there? That was going to be a fake to Morenci. And then he had receivers out in the flat. He had two receivers on different levels, both running to the sidelines in the flat, hoping to double-team the cornerback, one high, one low. 
And then that way they'd have a chance for a big play. That's what, when you saw Donovan Woods go in motion, it looked like he had a little, a little too much speed when he was taking over. He was going to go out and get to oh, the corner yeah. with a run pass option. Now it's third down and six with 310 to play in the half. And they'll put it up from the pocket. Pass thrown. Caught at the 25-yard line. 10, 8, Dewan Woods, and a penalty flag is thrown. What a spectacular catch. And was that who he was throwing to? Or was he throwing to the tight end, Badjuma? We had two receivers in the same slot. The result works very well for Oklahoma State. I'm not sure that was the intended route <laughs> that was drawn up by Coach Gundy and Coach Miles. It's, it's like the matter. NBA coach. Don't shoot. Don't, oh, great shot. Great shot. Pick up a 45 yards. Incidental face mask, number 31 on the defense. Half the distance to go. First. See, you got two guys in the same area. He was throwing to him because yeah. Badgemo was having to go back the other way. And he hit his brother. How about that telepathic brother-to-brother -brother connection? And got it right over the hands of the, the hand of the All-American De Derek Johnson, and then a juggling act and a great catch. Dewan De Woods came in this game averaging 22 yards per catch. He did nothing to hurt that average on the last play. This Texas defense only giving up 13 points a game. They go to the fullback, Julius Crossland. <laughs> Gets down to about the two-yard line. Second and goal. Greg Robinson was so pleased the way his defense has played the last couple of weeks, but they are being manhandled by the Cowboys tonight. What I'm wondering about is the spirit of the Texas team right now because they're catching them both ways. They're running the ball well, and because they're running it so well, that sets up the play action that Donovan Woods is able to throw downfield. They're getting big plays in the pass game, too. Willis and Seymour Shaw now in the eye. Willis the fullback. Woods is going to keep it. He has some daylight. Cuts back inside, but the gap closes quickly by Burt Orange jerseys. Derek Johnson leading the charge. Look out at the corner. As he comes all the way out to the corner, Donovan Woods. There's a block right there, but that was a good force play. A number 49, Eric Hall. It forced Donovan Woods to cut it inside quicker than he may have wanted to, allowed the pursuit to come inside out and get him. Timeout has been called with 1.38 to play in the half. Stick around for a Chili's halftime report. Big plays in both areas. Third down and goal. Lorenzi back in. They go with a fullback. And he will be short of the goal line. Crossland looks like he's at about the two-foot line. And now Robinson wants a timeout. If you're Oklahoma State, I'd go for it right here. Look at the play right there. Good surge. But Texas got enough to keep him out of the end zone. I think Greg Robinson's calling the timeout to get his troops organized and possibly hold enough time in case they keep them from scoring. Let's see if Texas can get something done before they have to go for it here. He's got momentum. He's got that big, tough, nasty offensive line. Seymour Shaw is dotting it. The fullback has carried it in, too, tonight, remember. Willis and Shaw on the eye. Shaw. Stop. No signal from the officials. Touchdown. There it is. And Texas can't believe it. They thought they stopped him at about the foot line, but the official said no way. And it's a 34-7 Oklahoma State shocker. Vernon Morenci, Seymour Shaw. What is the constant on those plays? Sean Willis, number 37, right. the fullback. It was the same counterplay that Morenci scored on a possession or two ago. And the extra point by Jason Ricks. Side winds it home. Here it is again. Yes, right, it's not the forte of the Texas offense. It hasn't been. They're used to playing from nearly even or from the front all year long. Being down 28, this is going to be a great coaching job here by Mac Brown and his staff at the half. They've got a lot of work to do to make sure the kids are mentally still with them and believing that they can come back. 
Well, they're going to have 80 yards to go in the final 121. Once again, field position has been huge for Oklahoma State. They have not given Texas great field position in this ballgame. Coaches say it all the time, right? Win the field position battle, win the turnover battle. <laughs> that yeah. puts you in great shape. I'm anxious to see what Greg Davis and Matt Brown do here on their first play and see if they even want to risk anything because they're a little bit shell shot. Mm -hmm. They'd hate to turn it over again one more time right before the half, but they're down 28 points, too. Well, he goes. Straight back, looking for the screen, trying to set it up, and does it. Benson cuts in the 30 up to the 32-yard line. Got the first down as Jamie Thompson makes the stop. The junior out of Spar, Florida, Butler Community College, and Texas quickly lining up. And that's your standard play. You run a screen, a draw, something that you can try and get some running room and some space. If you do on first down, that allows you to continue to run your offense in the two minute. If you don't, you possibly take a knee and run out the clock so that you don't have an error. That's a straight drop, looks into the flat. Throws it out of the flat, complete to Thomas, the tight end. He gets out of bounds for 57 seconds to play in the half. Ironically, their best drive been a, been a couple of passes. And our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. Vince Young, five of seven tonight for 77 yards. Has thrown a couple of picks, though, and they've been costly for Mac Brown. I think Bill Clay wants to play zone defense now in this situation, trying to keep everything in front of them and not give up a big play here. No snap. Young's got it. Throws it out of the flat, complete the line of Sweet. He gets up to the 45-yard line, the 46-yard line. That'll be a first down, and they'll stop the clock with 47 seconds left. Badget McGee on the stop. And the Longhorns line up again quickly. Young, incomplete. Thomas had it, turned his head right as he tried to catch it. Wow. Two, two, two deep zone coverage, and they did what, what coaches refer to as Mike down the pipe, mm -hmm. meaning number 12, Paul Dern, their middle linebacker, or Mike linebacker, went right down the middle of the field and covered on the territory. That's Greg Davis. He's offensive coordinator in communication with Mac Brown and also the signal callers about the next play call. That was Major Applewhite on his other side, by the way, former Texas great. 38 seconds left in the half. Young will put it up again. Plenty of time. Dumps it off low. Benson gets out of bounds as he gets into Oklahoma State territory at the 44-yard line. Little controlled offense here, something we haven't seen from them this year. And this is a good drive for Texas because it's a confidence builder if they can culminate with some points. Obviously, they want seven, but even a field goal gives them a better taste in their mouth before they go into the half. Let's see if Bill Clay counters a little bit and maybe comes after Vince Young. He's been laying back and playing zone the whole time, giving him a chance to throw the ball. Let's see if he decides to change up. Now Oklahoma State showing blitz, and here they come. Texas tries to pick it up, they do. Pass complete to Skates. Inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line. Great job on blitz pickup by that Longhorn offensive line. A good call because they picked up the blitz and Vince Young, the quarterback, ready and hit the right receiver. Excellent job. Bill plays a thing to himself. I won't put some pressure. And I say, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I should have laid back before, but they were moving the ball so easily, he wanted to try and force his hand. Pick up a 22. 18 seconds left. Young looking, throwing, has a man complete down to the five-yard line. Clock stops with 13 seconds left. Lime is sweet on the reception. They're going to get up on the clock play here by trying to spike it. Texas has two timeouts left. So they have one timeout left. Check that. One timeout left. And they'll just spike it with nine seconds left. Now, you've got this great running back. But you only have nine seconds left. Yeah, and he's not on the field. But very, you know, he may be on the field right now, but if he's going to be utilized, it'll probably be in the passing game to try and, in the worst case, if you swing it to him, he can get out of bounds if necessary. But right now, you've got to think getting into the end zone only nine seconds on the clock. Well, you think, what, you go for it once and then try to kick a field goal? That, that's, that's the intent right here because it's imperative they come away with points yeah. going into the half. 
I'm a sweet. He's a big receiver down here. Let's see if they try and hit him against a smaller DB. Looking in the corner of the end zone, throwing to Skate. He's run out of bounds with three seconds left. Touchdown! He got in with the ball! He was being run out of bounds, but somehow he got the ball over the pylon. Bo Skate. He's a guy who's had two big knee injuries and knee surgeries, a six-year senior. And watch him reach and stretch and go for the pylon. He gets it on the inside before he loses possession, crosses the goal, and the official's right on the spot as the best look and calls the touchdown. And the extra point is good with three seconds left. What a play, though, by Scaife. Well, Scaife on a, on a route getting to the corner. Watch the snap here. Vince Young in the pocket. Bo Scape delays one count. Goes right towards the pylon. Ball is perfectly thrown. And then he uses his strength to get the ball across the pylon for the touchdown. A huge, huge drive for Texas right before the half. Vince Young was 7 of 8 for 80 yards throwing on that drive. They used a minute and 18 on the clock. That's about as effective clock usage as you're ever going to see. And you can see the numbers tonight on, on Vince Young. <laughs> and people at home are saying, I thought you said this guy doesn't throw the football that effectively. We thought it would grind it out tonight. You know, we never thought it'd be 35 to 14. That that paper you hear tearing in the background is us tearing up yeah, our, our notes. for the evening. Yeah. <laughs> that thing was toast in the first quarter. That has to be something positive for Mac Brown. Huge. I mean, just absolutely huge to go in now for the touchdown. There's Dick Tomey, who's yep. come in and become the defensive line coach, defensive ends, and former head coach himself at Arizona and Hawaii. What he's he's coach, coach, right? At two yeah. programs. So he offers Matt Brown a lot of counsel and advice, as well as great coaching on the field. And they're just going to split it with three seconds left. Robert Jones. And that's going to end the first half. But what a first half we had. 297 yards for Oklahoma State, 220 yards for Texas. Here's Les Miles with Craig Singer. Welcome. Just over 40 seconds gone by. Young tucks it, keeps it, stays on his feet. Picks up about three on the play. Well, the end of the first half, Vince Young, vintage Vince Young, throwing a football 7 of 8 for the touchdown. And who did he connect with for the bigger plays? Number 80, Bo Scape. How about this on the post to Lima Swede? And then he's looking for Bo Scape out in the flat again. And the big fella reaches the ball across the pylon. Official right on the spot. Makes the call definite. A big touchdown going into the half for Texas. They're picking up right where they left off. That was in the final 118 of the half. Young has to pick it up, broken play, breaks the tackles, got some daylight. Inside the 25, down to the 21-yard line. Lawrence Pinson on the stop. That's making lemonade out of lemons. And this is good awareness by Vince Young because he knew where the play was designed to go. So that's the hole he went into when he picked up the ball on the fumble. A 17-yard gain. I think he had two or three tackles that he forced, that he made them miss on in order to gain that yardage. But that was good presence by Vince Young. Didn't let the fumbled snap take him out of the play. Well, they're going to have to hustle. They need seven to snap it. Now Vince is going to have to call the timeout. Oh, that's tough right there. You he don't want it started. You just take away oh. your momentum, too. Yes, momentum, and you might need that one later. Carroll K. Royal Field Memorial Stadium, over 80,000, another sellout crowd on hand. They were shocked in the opening 30 minutes, but Texas is moving here in the second half. The team called the play in the third. They have first and 10 on Oklahoma State's 21-yard line. Mack Brown, you heard what he told Craig Sager at the start of the third quarter. Score on that first possession. A little draw, Benson, bouncing to the outside. Inside the 15, to the 10, to the 4. During the break, Charles Davis turned to me and said, you can't forget about Cedric Benson. You've got to continue to make sure he touches the football. 
We talked about him at the top of the show. He gives them an identity, an identity of toughness. One missed tackle, two missed tackles before they get him out of bounds over the sideline. Never go totally away from a guy that special at the running back position. Well, we want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goalpost, Ken. You're in good hands with Allstate. And he relishes contact and makes great yardage after it. We go to the fullback, straight ahead. Will Matthews, nothing doing. On first and goal for the two. The good news is, so far, if you're Oklahoma, if you're uh, Texas, you've taken less than three minutes off the clock. I mean, this has been a pretty swift drive, and this is a team that time of possession has been huge. They had a 17-play drive against Texas Tech. Mac Brown's team has been like plus nine in time of possession. They don't have that luxury tonight for Greg Davis and company. They had the ball 38 minutes against Colorado in a 60-minute ball game. Just dominated that one. Second and goal. Benson looking for a block. Cuts it back inside, may have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. It's Robert Jones doing a good job from that cornerback spot. The senior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, Carl Albert High School. And what he did was set the corner and allowed the defensive flow inside out, where they didn't allow any cutback lanes for Cedric Benson. Nice job of defense by Oklahoma State. Don't be surprised if they come right back with Benson, maybe power running inside. They would sure like to jam one in here and feel good about it. Third down and goal from the two. Well, Oklahoma State jump, Texas jump, and we're going to sort it out. I think Oklahoma State jumped in the interior. How about Vince Young getting tied up there with Vernon Grant? Will Matthews comes over and says, leave my quarterback alone. <laughs> Never mess with a man named Headache. Yeah, by the way, my name is Headache. Part of the snap, offside defense, contact. It'll be half the distance. Look inside. It remains third yeah. down. Two or three guys jumping for Oklahoma State. Good job snapping the ball, too. Yes, because you catch them in the zone. A lot of play teams run what they call freeze play. Catch a defensive line in the neutral zone, snap the ball right away and get the offsides call. On the one, third and goal. Jump it again. Benson bangs his way in. Let's see. The officials running up. Still waiting. There it is. Touchdown. Less than four minutes to score in the opening possession of the half. Great job chopping the hole up front by the Texas offensive line. You saw number 63, Justin Blaylock, number 51, Mike Garcia, 52, Jason Glenn. Right side of the line. Carved a nice hole for Benson to pound his way into the end zone. This is important, the extra point. And it is good. Dusty Mangum, the senior out of Mesquite, Texas. But Cedric Benson pulls his way over from the one. 11 21 to the third, and Texas has cut the gap down to Fort and South Austin, one of the most beautiful cities around here, just part of the Texas Hill Country. And at Memorial Stadium right now, Texas, their opening drive, cut the lead down to 35 21. Along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager, I'm Ron Poulin. This has major BCS bowl implications for the Texas Longhorns and for Oklahoma State. The short kick. And it barely went out of bounds. That could have taken a divot, gone back in. And we saw it in the Oklahoma A&M game today. You have to be careful about that. Hard to stop it on these greens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to sand down that wedge, right? Watch this. Watch how close this is to coming back in play. Robert Jones eyeing it, eyeing it. Now he's caught. OK, please get out of bounds, please. And it did, so that will give Oklahoma State good field position. Greg Sager, how about Greg Robinson at halftime? Well, Mac Brown has his coaching staff on the same page. During this last drive, after the offense scored the touchdown, Greg Robinson, defensive coordinator, grabbed his team together, and he said, listen, the offense did their job. This game is now manageable. Let's go out and not only stop them, but let's see if we can get a turnover and give the ball back to the offense. From the 35-yard line. Woods in a shotgun, and he'll change things up. Two tight ends. Texas jumping all over the place. 
Lorenzi, not much running room, maybe a half a yard. Roderick Wright, the big junior out of Houston, Texas, on the stop. When we went to practice Thursday, we heard Mac Brown talk to his team at the end of practice, and he remember he said, "Remember, fellas, strong on strong." Meaning we're expecting a power yeah. game today. The guy's going to go at it. Strongest team comes out of it. This is why you work hard in the offseason. This time of year, strong on strong. That's what Greg Robinson's preaching to his defense right now. They keep it on the ground. Second and eight, the pitch. Morency looking for running room. Tripped up as he crosses the 40. Up to about the 42-yard line. Derek Johnson with the stop. That is his eighth tackle of the night. Already leads the team in tackles. Vernon Morency is so good. Morency, how can I get this right, don't I? He's so good that he made more out of that play than he should have. Because Texas oh, yeah. had strung it out well and had people in position. But once he got square and powered through, he gained additional yardage. Third down and four. Longhorn show blitz. Woods keeps it. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, and they stopped him at the 40. Tim Crowder had the first hit. Derek Johnson came in to clean things up for his ninth tackle. Great play by Tim Crowder, number 80. The initial penetration into the backfield, which forced Donovan Woods a little deeper, didn't allow him to get the power in his run. And then Derek Johnson, the All-American, cleans up with some help from Aaron Harris, his cohort at linebacker. Mac Brown looking like a prophet at the moment. Old Farden. Good snap, no pressure. Beautiful kick again. Aaron Ross backing up to lose 11. The wall is setting up. The Oklahoma State does another great job in coverage. They'll mark it at the 22-yard line. 46 yards on the kick, 10 yards on the return. This week, first and 10 from the 22-yard line for the Longhorns. Young just throws it underneath the coverage. Up to the 27 to the 30-yard line. Pass is complete to Central Benson. Daniel McLemore on the stop. Nice tackle by McLemore, number four. But that's a good, another one of those runs that pays off later in the half for Cedric Benson, meaning when he, when he runs into McLemore and really delivers the blow, yeah. how many do you take off of the big fellow that's like right. that? McLemore's a lot smaller. So are most of the defensive backs for Oklahoma State. They just bang straight ahead with a fullback, Will Matthews. They needed one. They got the first down. And my point is this. This is what people talk about all the time with these big, strong running backs, why they get stronger in the fourth quarter. Because yeah. they've worn them down over the first three. Mm -hmm. After a while, you're not as eager to run 10 yards hard and hurl your body into a solid mass as Cedric Benson time after time after time. I'm going to tell you, I've done it. It hurts. It gets it. It gets it hurts. And after a while, you get tired of doing it, and that's where they count on being the edge for the offense. Lima Sweet wide of the right. On first and ten. Well, they put it up again. Pump fake. Has Sweet wide open. Does the ball get to him? And it does complete. The ball looked like a wounded duck, but it got there. 37 yards on the completion. Now look, this is McLemore, number four in white. Stop and go. He does what he's supposed to. Now watch him trying to catch up. Doesn't have enough to go up through his arms and knock it away. Great stop and go action and a great job by Lima Swede. You know why at the end of the play? Do you see how he went up for the football and went up and got it before the defensive back could get there? Great job. First and ten. Ball is now on the 30-yard line. A little fancy schmancy, Ramos Taylor. Breaks a tackle, gets inside the 25-yard line. McLemore, his fourth tackle of the night. He's a busy young man. Okay, watch here. In motion, he's going to come around here. Fake will go inside, and then the handoff there. And Taylor comes around, comes around, and on the reverse. 
against Flo coming back the other way. Good block on the corner, and then he slips the tackle. That allows him to get downfield. Victor DeGreat, former linebacker, number 51, had a chance at the play, unable to complete it at the line of scrimmage. But you don't mind picking up seven on the first down. Oh, that, good. that allows you to get ahead of schedule, right? Ahead of the chains, opens up the playbook on second and short. Two tight ends, and they're going to give it to Benson. Cuts back against the green. Gets a block. Touchdown, Cedric Benson. Within eight, three rushing touchdowns for Cedric Benson, making a pitch for the Heisman Trophy tonight. And the extra point is good. In seven and a half minutes, Texas has hung 14 more on the board, and they're only down by seven. Hook'em Horns, the Hook'em Horn statue here in Austin, Texas, and now you have 80,000 people standing doing the chant. A whole new level of enthusiasm has hit this stadium. Because of that man, three rushing touchdowns tonight, 85 yards on 13 carries. But we're far from over. From the three-yard line. Prentice Elliott breaks through. To the 40, to the 45, to the 46-yard line, and that is the way they started this ball game. Just over an hour, two hours and 15 minutes ago. And it's got Mac Brown fired up too because he knows what field position can do. Let's take a look at the last touchdown by Texas. Take a look here. The right side of the offensive line. Now watch what happens here because what happens is David Thomas turns back here, block down here, block down here, and then Cedric Benson goes there. Watch. See him on the cutback, boom. Great job of blocking down. Lima Sweet setting the corner. Touchdown, Texas. Nice job by Lima Sweet. But now Oklahoma State with good field position, leading by seven. 7.26 to play in the third. Lorenzi hit hard, loss of about four. Derek Johnson lowered the boom. And Vernon Morenci is going to have to check the uh, cavities, I think. Here comes the boom, and it wears number 11. And Burn Orange forced by Aaron Harrison. Wham! He hit him so hard he never oh. had to wrap up. That's what they call it. That's what they call him tackling. To him, through him, and beyond him. <laughs> he did all of them. Well, he got to Morenci mad. But you know, he knocked him back. I'll tell you how hard he hit him. They only gave him a one yard loss. He was back about four when he finally came down. Right now, old Tommy Nobis has to be enjoying watching number 11 play. Second down and 11 for the Cowboys. They'll try it again. And again, the Texas defense stuffs them right at the line of scrimmage. And again, number 11 is in on it along with Larry Dibble. Brian Robinson also in on it. How about the adjustments of Greg Robinson at the half? That play that was just run was very successful for Oklahoma State in the first half. The counter play. Move the fullback in motion to get things started. Come back and wham on the other side. That play, no room to run for Vernon Morenci. Third down and 11. Oklahoma State will put it up in the air. Woods. He's caught from behind the line, and he is going to be dropped at the 37-yard line. Tim Crowder, his second sack of the night. Watch Crowder coming from the right side, working on number 75, Corey Hilliard, one of their better offensive linemen. Just beat him with a speed rush to the outside and gets a huge sack. Two straight possessions for Texas defense, resulting in punts by Oklahoma State. And they'll have to kick it away again. Only the third punt for Oklahoma State tonight. And he fakes it. Nope, he's going to kick it. He thought about it, but 
Texas did a great job that he shakes it. He fought too much. Absolutely. Texas did a good job of covering everybody up, and Cole Farden said, I'm not going to throw this. 25 yards on the kick. I don't know if what happened here was that it was a fake on and not everyone got the word. Or he Nobody was looking. There was no one there. It's almost as if he thought there was a fake on and yeah. everyone else did not. Or Texas just covered the guys. They didn't really cover They may have held up their intended receiver. In any event, the punch was not very good. In the second half, on their possessions, Oklahoma State minus five yards. And Texas now scoring on their first two possessions of the second half of the penalty. Well, you said at the top of the show, Charles, the defense of Texas. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 80. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. We talked about the defense. Mac Brown and company have what they call NOSs, not our standards. That whole first half wasn't up to their standards, but they've stepped it up a notch, and it's caused the momentum here. I really think the touchdown before the half brought the whole Absolutely. team back into it. And then Mac Brown, the master of positive reinforcement and positive messages. You heard what he told Craig Sager, and they're playing exactly as he said, as he described here in the second half. They'll keep it on the ground. Benson takes a hit. Still pulls his way. Maybe picks up two on the play. This is a man that 56% of his rushing yards this year came after contact. And here's Benson. Whatever word you want to use to describe Cedric Benson. Eventually, you're going to get around to tough, aggressive, won't quit on runs, and, he, and he's, he's just really a sledgehammer back there. And right now, he's starting to pound away a little bit at Oklahoma State's defensive front, although they are in second and long here. 22 100-yard rushing game for Benson. The Longhorns are 22-0 when he cracks the century mark. He has 88 now. Long pass complete to Lima Smith, who steps out of bounds right at the first down marker. His fourth reception, he'll be about a yard short. It's a young man growing up, number four in burnt orange, or the dark uniform. Just running an out route, plenty of room for him in front of McLemore. Daniel McLemore, number four. A case of taking what the defense gives you, sets up a third and short. And you know with Texas, plenty of options here. You got Benson number 32, Young number 10 if you want to run the ball. And they'll give it to Benson. Tiptoes his way, breaks through, over the 50, down to the 47 yard line. John Holland had to make the stop once again. We saw the play before. Jerry Don Bray hit Benson, went back a couple yards. Watch this. Watch at the end. Watch the patience as a runner. Sees the hole, shift, shift. Now the power. Bam! He lowers the shoulder and runs right through the tackle of John Holland. He's able to get him down, but not before Benson gains additional yardage. And again, it's one of those attrition runs that I like to talk about. And we see some of that attrition right now. One of the defensive backs hurt on the play. Looks like number 20, Vernon Grant. Well, we've got some great defense being played, but one of the greatest ever to play here in Austin is with our Craig Sager now. Sags? Well, I don't know if it was Mac Brown's speech at halftime or suddenly looking over and seeing the great Tommy Novas on the sidelines, but obviously this Texas team playing a lot differently. What did you think when you saw Oklahoma State put 35 points on the board? Well, I saw some poor tackling, number one. I'm sure that's what the players and the coaches saw, but now the... Uh, the team is, is showing really the talent and the character that they have and I tell you that this is college football at its best. You got the uh, the fans here, the student bodies all coming into play and it's just uh, it's just uh, a great thing to be a part of to be here and be a part of college football and rooting for my Longhorn. A lot of times we hear young kids don't have an appreciation for those before them. After this play tell us what it meant to you when Derek Johnson called you. Now we'll get back right after this play. Here comes the reverse again. Ramones Taylor gets a block inside the 40. He could go. Touchdown, Texas.
They trail 35 to 14, and we apologize to Tommy Novus, but I think he's probably cheering too. 35 to 14 at halftime, and his Longhorns have come storming back in the third quarter. This will tie it up. And we are knotted up at 35. Watch how they set it up on the back side because the block's going to come back here on the reverse. You won't see it now, but watch coming to your picture. See that block there? A second block. That allowed Ramones Taylor to get to the corner. And then with his speed, great job tight roping down the chalk on the sideline. And we now have a tie ball game. Looked like an option. Reversed against Flo. And that allowed the lineman to get out and get to the corner. And look at him staying inbounds. Wow. Great job by Ramones Taylor. And we have a whole new ball game now. If you want to get technical about it, partner, it was 35-7. That's right. At one point. And remember, this is a Texas team last year. Was down 16 to 14 in Stillwater to Oklahoma mm -hmm. State and ran off 47 unanswered points in the second half en route to a victory. To quote the great philosopher Yogi Berra, could this be deja vu all over again? All over again. <laughs> and this young man is a true freshman from Belton High School in Temple, Texas, just north of here. The Class 5A long jump champion. Thought about moving him to wide receiver, but this week we were told by the coaches, we need to get this young man some more touches. And they found different ways. What have we seen him touch it on tonight? Two, or two reverses, right? Yep. They threw it to him in the pass game early in the ball game, and also he's returning kicks. Yep. So they're developing him, bringing him along, and of course, never neglecting number 32 in the backfield. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's the big punisher. McGee the kick. It'll be short again at the five-yard line. Robert Jones. He gets through the first wave of tacklers and drops at the 25-yard line. Greg Sager, now you can continue your conversation with Tommy. Well, Tommy Novus here because Derek Johnson had called him and said, hey, I've always admired you. It's great to be called the next Tommy Novus. I'd like to talk football and meet you. You're off this weekend with the Falcons. What did it mean to you to have a young kid like that give you a call? Well, I tell you what, it, it's very meaningful, really, and particularly one that plays the way that, that DJ plays, the way he plays, and for him to have interest in me and my career in the past and ask me for any advice at all, it's very meaningful. And I tell you again, it's, uh, uh, I'm just getting carried away with the, what this game is happening here with the excitement and so forth. Now that it's a tie game, you can leave your number 60 jersey in the locker room. Back to you, Ron. All right, thanks, thanks. Lorenzi tripped up. Tim Crowder on the stop, his fourth tackle of the night. Now the Texas Longhorns trying to come back. Their largest comeback was 19 points in the 2001 Holiday Bowl. They beat Washington 47-43. They were down a bunch tonight, and we're still not out of the third quarter. Now we're, the one thing about Oklahoma State is they've had a lot of resolve all year long. All the momentum's in Texas's corner right now, but a less miles team, <laughs> yeah. they've always found a way to get it together. Came back from a 17-0 deficit against Missouri. Texas pointing at Oklahoma State saying they move. Yeah, I'm a little jumpy right now. Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 78 offense. It's a five-yard penalty. And remains second down. Hey, Ron, you remember in the first half when Texas was a little jittery mm -hmm. on offense? Remember what I said that Vince, Vince Young needed to do? I'm same advice for Donovan Woods. He's a redshirt freshman, but the team already calls him a leader. He must get his team settled here and into some good plays. The regular season largest comeback was 17, and Texas did that twice. A little play action, Donovan Woods. Here comes the pressure. Puck from behind and dropped back at the 21-yard line. Tim Crowder, the sophomore out of John Tyler High School, is just come alive here in the second half. His third sack of the night. And our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. And that first and ten line is now 15 yards away from the line of scrimmage. How about Tim Crowder? He has just he just come alive here late in the first half, beginning of the second half. No one in the backfield for Oklahoma State. Three wide receivers. Coming after him, Ron. 
Now they back off. They throw it out of the flat. It's incomplete. Is the ball loose? No, they're saying it was a pass, not a lateral. Prentice Elliott could not come up with it. That was close to being a lateral. There you can see it. Yeah, he see got the ball. See the ball's thrown. It's thrown behind him. Yeah. But I don't think it's no. enough to call it a lateral. I think that it still would have been known as a forward pass. Just a bad throw. The lines of the line judge was all over the play. He had it and made a definite call as soon as he saw the ball down. Minus five yards in the third quarter for Oklahoma State. After hanging 297 in the first half. Beautiful kick again. Farden has done a wonderful job tonight. Ross will take it up to the 27-yard line, and that's where Texas will have it. College football on TBS continues. Now reverse set up well because of the running of Cedric Benson. Young's pass complete over the 50-yard line to David Thomas, the tight end. Seven receptions by the tight ends tonight. That one went for 25. Great throw, a seam route by the tight end. And he threw it above the linebacker and before the safety. See the linebacker or the strong safety there? Jamie Thompson, number 23. And before the safety, John Holland could come over. A great throw by Vince Young. Terrific route by David Thomas. It's a career-high passing now for Young. A little shuttle pass. Benson breaks through, gets over the 40-yard line, down to the 35. Vernon Grant, sixth tackle of the night. That is not a happy sideline. They look gassed. You know, and there's always a rule about things. When things go bad for a player, you often attack him again. And this wasn't necessarily by design, but you remember the pass over number 23, Jamie Thompson? They come right back at him. He yeah. misses a tackle the very next play. That's why they always tell you, you got to let the last play go, move on to the next one. Texas has it clicking right now. Vince Young has thrown it 20 times, completed 17. Benson. <laughs> I'm not saying we're smart, which we proved that tonight, because we said if he has to throw 20, 30 times, you're in trouble. <laughs> well, he's thrown 20, and they've tied the score up with 40 seconds left. Yeah, not exactly what you would expect no. in, terms of, in terms of Texas. But it's working well, and, and you talk about this a lot, Brian. A rhythm for play calls. That's right. Greg Davis and Mac Brown are locked into a nice rhythm on offense right at this point of the game. He's completing 70% of his passes the last three games. Prior, the two games prior to that, he was just getting clobbered in the newspapers that this kid can't throw the ball. In fact, he was 11 of 32 in the two prior games prior. Snap. Ball start, number 16. It's a five-yard penalty. It remains second down. But Mac Brown always stood, and Greg Davis stood next to Vince Young. And they said, we're going to make it so you can be successful. They gave him a DVD of some of his good plays with the television announcers on. Yeah, they, they utilized that with the television announcer's voices talking about the great plays that he did and the great things that he did. So it was positive reinforcement all the time for him as opposed to hearing all the negatives. Great coaching job by Texas. Hope he didn't put us in. You can't throw 20 times a game. <laughs> he keeps it, hops over. Gets down to about the 35-yard line, and that'll be the end of quarter number three. But what a quarter. The Texas Longhorns hang 21 points on Oklahoma State. We head to the final stanza, knotted up at 30 to 35 apiece, along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager. I'm Rob Thulin. Welcome to be back to Austin, Texas. This could go down as the biggest comeback in Texas history, regular season or postseason. Now they're facing third down in 10 from the 36. Don't be surprised if they gain some good yardage here. There's two down territory from Matt Brown. Two tight ends, plenty of time. They just dump it off into the flat. Benson gets inside the 30-yard line of the 29. Will be about four yards short of the first down. Paul Duran on the stop. Now let's see if they do go for it. They might very well go for it here. The defense played so well to start the second half. Gave up no points in the third quarter. But he's feeling confident with them again. That Texas defense had only given up three points the entire third quarter this year. Looks like uh, 
They're going to try for the field goal. See, they don't need our advice. No, they don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> they does. don't need to hear from us. They know what they're doing. Well, Tony Jeffrey is going to be the holder, and we're going to have a timeout call. Texas is going to call a timeout. Dusty Mangum was lining up. His longest one this year was 48 yards. Now, you think Texas called the timeout because they wanted to uh, rethink I think going this? back with the offense. I really do. And I think I see the big boys going to the huddle, and they called Dusty Mangum back. Mac Brown riding the wave of emotion with his team. And remember in the first half, unless Miles went for it to show some confidence yeah. in his guys, this could be very well the same type of coaching move made by Mac Brown on the other side. Fans, it's time to vote for your team over player of the game to vote. Here's what you do. Pick up your phone. You text message A, B, C, or D. More Morency, Woods, Benson, or Young. Send it to TBS a little bit later on. Ernie will give you the results. Craig Sager, what do you have for us, partner? Well, we know the confidence Mac Brown showed his team at halftime after he sent out the punt unit, I mean the field goal unit. The offense came over here, and he kept telling them, let's go for it. We can do it. Let's go for it. So they showed confidence in Mac Brown just like he showed confidence in them, and he said, okay, let's go. It's a great idea, Craig, because you're down there. You can feel the emotion. This stadium is rocking now. Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, that's him right there. He's talked with Mac Brown, who's taken a more active role in play calling this year. They're listening to the team. Now the team has to go out and get it done. I'm guessing shotgun formation. You've got some type of a either zone run with Benson or the zone read from Vince Young. And they've shown option out of this tonight, too. Fourth down and one. They give it to Benson. He breaks through inside the 10 yard line, down to the 8 yard line. The sixth play over 20 yards in this half for Texas. The zone run inside. See Jonathan Scott, 73, pushes off of one guy, marries up with John Holland, number 17. And the football terms, locks up with it. Look at the line. Glenn, 52, the center, moves his guy. Scott moves one guy, moves the second guy. And then Benson with his determined running before he's grabbed by Paget and McGee. First and goal from the eighth. Benson. Puts his head down and gets down to the five-yard line, following behind the block of Jason Glenn and Mike Garcia. The punishing runner, he already has three touchdowns tonight. The tenth member of the 5,000-yard club. Six of those other nine members won the Heisman. Will he win a Heisman? He's he, got it. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, he's over 100 yards, and they're 22-0, and 22-0 this year when he does get 100 over his career. Remember, under Mac Brown, they're 55-0 when they outrush their opponents. And they're doing it today. Touchdown, Texas Benson! Charles, you talked about the collapse of Oklahoma State last year against Texas. Do you think the players are thinking about that now? You would like to think that they aren't, but those who were around do remember it, and they're fighting the negative thoughts as we speak. Texas's first lead of the football game. 13-17 to play. They lead it now by a touchdown. Cedric Benson, four touchdowns tonight. Texas coming back from a 35 to 14 deficit. 28 unanswered points. They lead it 42-35. Oklahoma State only minus five yards total Look at the in Texas the second half. <laughs> Did you oh, see that? Man. Look at the emotion of the Texas bench right now. For McGee. The kick will be short at the five-yard line. Brennan Elliott. Looking for some running room. Penalty flag is thrown as he gets over the 30-yard line to the 40-yard line. They have done an outstanding job on kickoff returns tonight. This one might come back. And it is. It's a holding call. During the run by. Half the distance to the goal. First and ten. Craig Sager is with somebody who's pretty famous here in Texas, Edge. 
Well, you're on not only Cedric Betts have four touchdowns, but he's moved up the charts, the all-purpose yardage in Texas history, to number two behind Ricky Williams, passing Eric Metcalf. Eric, great career you had watching Cedric Benson pass you. What does that mean to you here tonight? It means a lot. Cedric's a great running back, and he's done a lot of great things since he's been here. So, I mean, I feel comfortable that someone like him is, uh, is passing me now. You said he's going to get on that last drive. You knew he only needed 20. I knew he would. They're blocking well. They're playing real well. And uh, he's just determined. He looks more determined in the second half than he did the first half. He's making big plays. Thanks a lot, bud. All right, Eric Metcalf sure can play, but look at that emotion on the sideline. Drastic difference between Texas's and Oklahoma State's. Morenci and Willis in the backfield. Still plenty of time left. Woods will put it up. He's being pressured. Here it comes. Incomplete. Intended for Sean Willis, but he was running for his life. Tim Crowder again putting the pressure on along with Eric Hall. Remember the first half when I kept imploring Texas not to get away from their identity, play to their strength, continue to run the football? I think Oklahoma State has to remember the same thing. They're only down seven. And one of the best ways to take a crowd out of a ball game and take some emotion out, yeah. some good physical runs, gain some yardage, move the sticks, get a drive so it dissipates this emotion a little bit. That's right. They continue to kick the ball away. That wave and that momentum keeps rising for the guys wearing orange. Badgerman moving around. Three drives, three punts in this half for Oklahoma State. Look out. There wasn't too many white jerseys near it. And he's in the pocket. So yeah. They're, they're saying that should be intentional grounding. I thought Greg Robinson was going to throw off his headset. No, it is. Here it is again. See, he's still in the pocket. As defined by tackle to tackle of your offensive lineman. Where he grounded the football, there was no Oklahoma State receivers anywhere in the vicinity. Got away with one there, didn't he? Third down and ten. Johnson in motion. They keep it on the ground. Up over the 15 to the 17 yard line. Derek Johnson stopping Woods. Penalty flag thrown late. And it's a sideline violation against Texas. But we haven't had a sideline warning all night, have we? No, not that I've seen. I'm hoping that's a sideline warning. Sideline warning. That's the first sideline warning of the half. Okay. Now that makes sense to me. Yeah. Because if it's just a flag right away, there's usually a warning yeah. before the flag comes out. Good job by the referee jumping in. Well, play's dead, isn't it? No, I thought it was dead. <laughs> play's dead. That's that's normal when coaches go on the field to signal. Okay, here's our here's our next unit going in. The fourth part of the second half for Oklahoma State. Here comes the pressure. Harden again. Nice job, Ross. Spins away from the first, and he is going to be dropped at midfield. 36 yards on the kick will call it three on the return. But the Texas Longhorns have everything going their way in Austin. Didn't have much to cheer about in the opening 30 minutes. They have in the second. Minus two, or plus two yards, I should say, for Oklahoma State in the second half. Four, three and outs. And that's allowed Les Miles' team to... See that lead slip away. And now Texas, first and ten from midfield, right at the 50. Young keeps it. What a fake. Has some green in front of him. Skips up to the 45, out at the 43. He already set us a record tonight, a UT record with 12 consecutive passes. And his godfather is Steve McNair, who's here tonight. Yeah, the Tennessee Titans quarterback. Uh, Vince Young calls him Big Papa. I saw Steve at the hotel this afternoon, and I asked him, what's been the biggest area of growth you've seen in Vince Young as a quarterback? And he said game management, awareness of what's going on, putting the time in with film study, and he just watched him grow, and he's... He's watching him as a proud godfather tonight. 
Benson, not much running room. Benson, 125 yards prior to that. That's 12 consecutive passes completed, we should say, for Vince Young. Chris Sims had the old record of 11, and that uh, Vince Young record is still in progress. And it's third down and three. It's funny when we talked to Vince after practice on Thursday because he's been dinged up a little bit yep. this year. And I said, you ever think about sitting out a little bit and taking some time? And he said, the Steve McNair is my godfather. The way that he plays through injuries, he'd never let me hear the end of it. I don't think so. <laughs> third down, we'll call it four for the Longhorns. That'll be against Texas. Moving back. Third down and nine, which changes things. Now, the reason this is important, when you look at the big picture, to listen in first on Prior the Practice snap, false start. Offense, number 63, remains third down. Justin Blaylock, the culprit. But here you have Tennessee losing, which doesn't help Auburn. Now, Texas still wants to get up into that BCS thing. They want the BCS Bowl. They lost last year because Kansas State beat Oklahoma. But this is a must-win situation for them. It is for them to have a chance of moving up in the BCS rankings and getting into the top six and getting that invitation that they so desperately want. Tennessee is losing today. How does it hurt Auburn? Because it brings down quality points for them on the other side. They needed Tennessee to get to the title game 10 and 1 to help them move up in the polls. Oklahoma State blitzes Young going deep. Looking for Brian Carter overthrown. Penalty flags are thrown. Daniel McLemore was on the coverage. Maybe he stepped out of bounds because they moved the flags up to the 22 yard line. So I'll have to wait and hear the call. And normally they take your hat and throw yeah. it as, 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 a, as a point of where a guy steps out of bounds. But sometimes they reach for the other flag, too. Let's see what the call is. And I thought initially they're going in for interference That's on the sideline. That's what side I thought, line. too. Randy Crystal. quite a discussion. Pass interference. Defense. Number four with a cutoff. Number four, McLemore working at the It'll top against Carter. Hand fighting the down. whole way down the field, inside. See, hard for me to say much there because I'm seeing the inside view. Yeah. But I think what they probably were saying was that McLemore, his inside arm, working the whole way, riding Carter downfield. To me, that would be why the official would throw the flag. But you know, as an ex-DB, I don't see nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, I that's kind of part of the package. That. They yeah. know where they're going. We got to have some kind of help. Yeah, you got to hold on to something. Well, that's a 15-yard penalty, and with 11 on one to play, it's first and 10 now for Texas. Young dancing to the outside. Pops over a tackle and skips out at the 32-yard line. Here you see him. Now you don't. Daniel McLemore grabs some air on that one. And really, it was well defensed by Oklahoma State. It was his own read inside, faking it to Cedric Benson because he thought the end was crashing down. And he really didn't. And he was able to stay outside and got some help from Roderick Johnson, number two. And they had him, except, as you said, whoop. <laughs> that was a little hop step, and he got out of bounds. Still good defense, only a two-yard gain. Tony Jeffrey wide to the left, on second down and eight. Benson just puts that head down, gets inside the 30, down to the 28-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Rivals.com is your football recruiting source. Who will be the stars of tomorrow? Check out Rivals.com and find out today. Yeah, we have two great backs in Morenci and Benson. Both played baseball. Both obviously couldn't hit the curveball. That's why they're running in college football. <laughs> that darn curve that messed curve. up a lot of people's plans. With Benson now with 127 yards. His 23rd game over 100 yards. They're down at five. Young keeps it. Skips over. Has some daylight and is tripped up by a shoelace. Robert Jones got a hold of him as he cleared the 15 and went down at the 14. Watch the block he gets right here from Benson. A blitz came from Oklahoma State, ran right at another great block there. Lima Swede, number four. A big time block downfield on number 19, Jeremy Nathan. Great job by, te by Texas. In the first half, we spent a lot of time talking about Oklahoma State's offensive line yeah. and how mean and nasty and tough they are. 
I think we we have to say the same thing about Texas, especially so. here in the second half. That's a confident, and I'm going to say it in the best possible way, arrogant bunch right now. They don't think there's any way Oklahoma State can do anything with them up front. They think that they're controlling things, and yes, they are. Well, they've got 328 yards, Texas does, in the second half. 548 total yards offense at Oklahoma State in the second half, two yards. This kind of reminds us, I think, we did the Stanford USC game. It was a, it was a Dickens yeah. novel. Best of times, worst of times. And, and, and the tale of two halves was as we look at the Texas offensive line. I remember reading about Dan Gierdor, I've talked about when he was with the Cardinals, that they unconsciously had always sat in their positions. As we look at the rushing in the first half, for Oklahoma, rushing this half, Oklahoma State, two yards rushing, Texas 186. But he said that they were such a unit that when they sat mm -hmm. for meetings, they sat center, two guards, two tackles. When they walked into the dining room, they walked as a unit. When they walked onto the field to warm up, they walked as a unit. They did everything that way. And that's the sense you get from these two offensive lines tonight, that they bonded that way. And it's really paying off for Texas here in the second half. Well, it's first down and 10 from the 14. To the outside, gets inside the 10-yard line. They'll run him out at the six-yard line. Vernon Grant with 10 tackles tonight for the Cowboys. <laughs> I keep hearing from people all the time that Cedric Benson isn't very fast. Well, if that's the case, how come he's always out running people to the corner? See, he, got, he outran the end there. There's another guy missing at the corner. Is it finally knocking him over the sideline? But a play that looked like it had a chance of being stopped at the line of scrimmage. He ends up getting eight yards out of it. Didn't they say that about Emmett Smith? At yeah, you know, yeah, he's just a lugger, you know? Well, he's lugged his way into the Hall of Fame. So the Vince could have the same type of career. And Benson looking for Painter. Touchdown, Texas. Rushing touchdowns, 141 yards rushing total. A career high as far as the scores go. You know, great players come up and make great plays when your team needs it. We've seen it tonight from Cedric Benson. The extra point is good. From being down 35 to 14, Texas has now gone up 49 to 30 to Austin, Texas with 9.43 to play. Texas has taken a 49 to 35 lead after trailing 35 to 14. And it has been an impressive showing. This will be five yards deep. Let's take a look at tonight's All-State Good Hands play. You're in good hands with All-State. This is one of the bright spots for the Cowboys tonight. Great catch by Donovan Woods. Yeah. Or DeWan Woods. Everything going really well in the first half for them. Look at it. Puts the outside arm up. Cradles it to his chest. Terrific hands. You, know, you look at those drives. Four three and outs for Oklahoma State. But then Texas's drives. For touchdowns, 80, 78, 63, 72, and 50. But two, 12 plays, two yards. Two play, two yards total for a team that runs the ball as well as Oklahoma State. Lorenzi only five carries in the second half for five yards. Seymour Shaw. A senior out of Shawnee, Oklahoma. His fifth carry of the night. But still, they were only down seven. Yes, the, you know, the, the, the lug nuts come, it came undone and the oil light was on, but you were only down seven. You got away from what got you to this point. Right, only down seven. I know they were backed up in their territory, which I thought would make them run the ball more, but they went play action pass on first down, right? Threw it again on second, and then ran the Donovan Woods on third and then had the punt. Takes the... Out of the flat, complete. Brennis Elliott, the true freshman out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Here's Craig Seger. 
Well, that could be the first first down of this half by Oklahoma State. When you mention the first four drives, four punts, the toll has taken its effect on the Oklahoma State defense. Over on the sidelines, totally, totally exhausted. Robert Jones, who came out just before the last touchdown, being treated for cramps. A sure sign that the team is drained. Good point. It's not an especially hot day here today. Yeah. They but really worked them. If you look at those drives again that we talked about, after a long time and some punishing runs too by Texas. Donovan Woods looking, has time. Here comes the rush. They miss him. Throws, passes complete to Elliott. And he is dropped after a pickup of about eight. Good, solid patience by Donovan Woods. That's something he may not have done in the beginning of the season. He continues to grow and evolve as a quarterback, but also how about Prentice Elliott, who's a freshman and recognized his quarterback was in trouble. He had run a sideline route, saw that his quarterback was in trouble, cut back towards the middle of the field, found some open grass for him, and he presented himself as a good target. Great job. How close was he last week versus Oklahoma? He oh. catches that pass as soon as lose. And the BCS is topsy turvy. One more job. Lorenzo back into the ball game. Woods will be dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Derek Johnson, 12 tackles in the ball game for the best linebacker in the country. Speed kills, right? See how he just sits through the hole and runs down the quarterback on the play. Great vision to find where he could move on the field and was never blocked. That's one of the great attributes of Derek Johnson. A lot of people said it was a negative previously that he didn't, you know, he didn't yeah. take on blocks real well. Well, he takes them on now, but when you don't need to and you can make a play, that's how it gets, that's how you do it. Third down and two. They pitch it back to Morenci. Looking for some running room, and they are going to run him out of bounds short of the first down. He could not turn the corner. Just a great pursuit by the Texas defense led by Michael Huff. They talk about adjustments. Oh, Greg Robinson made some adjustments. Well, coming into this game, Texas had only given up, what, three points in the third quarter right. all season long? Gave up zero tonight. Part of that is due to the great adjustments made by Greg Robinson at the half. And who is he best friends with and coached with and played with? Pete Carroll. USC, another great guy at adjusting at the half as a defensive coordinator. Huge fourth down. Fourth down and a long one. And they will go for it. Think option here. Play action. Woods pass. Intercepted. Terrell Brown has some running room. He's got a convoy. Kiss him goodbye. But we do have a penalty flag back at the 30. Well, we'll have to listen in. It was a late throw. During the return, Mark Global Ace, number 87, Texas. It'll be a 15-yard penalty, first and 10, Texas. Well, erase the six points off the scoreboard. You know, hindsight's 20-20, but the reason I called option before that is I wanted, I thought Oklahoma State would want a chance to have their better runners have an opportunity to go for it on one yard, meaning either Donovan Woods keeps it or he pitches it to Vernon Morenci mm -hmm. instead of throwing the ball. Why? Because Donovan Woods is barely a 50% thrower. Let's look and see if we see it behind the play. Top of the screen. Top of the screen right there. Yep. Neil Tweedy, number 87, cutting him down. Actually took two guys down on the play. Good call by the officials. But Texas keeps the football. And the kicker was that Brown was already by him. Yeah, again, behind the play. Have a better, have better field awareness. But Texas right now happy to have the football. Great interception by Terrell Brown. Up by 14. Yo, keeps it. He has some daylight. Benson lays a block. He's inside the 30. Inside the 20. Young will score. Have mercy.
This is a career night for Vince Young. After an incredible first half by the Cowboys, Young and Vincent have come alive. We talked about missed tackles by Texas, missed tackles by Oklahoma State in the second half. And the extra point is good. Inside of seven minutes, Texas is up 56 on Oklahoma. Now let's take a look at our Levi's game summary for tonight. You can see the 35 to 14 lead at halftime, but 42 unanswered points. That is just a, 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 an incredible performance by Texas for the second year in a row. They trailed at halftime to Oklahoma State. For the second year in a row, they've gone over 50 points against Oklahoma State thanks to a second half explosion. Last year, 47 unanswered points to get things rolling in the second half. Tonight, they were down at 1.35 to 7. Yeah, you can't forget about that. Before they scored the touchdown right before the half. Wisely taking a seat, Prentiss Elliott. We talked about missed tackles all night. Watch here. First one, Marquis Fountain right there. Missed the tackle on, on Vincent Young. Now he gets out to the corner. Sees a nice block there from Cedric Benson. Then he gets to the corner. It's going to be number 20, Vernon Grant. Boom, right there. Another opportunity, missed tackle. Then he gets down to the end, and that's number 10, Thomas Wright. Really doesn't have much chance at the four-yard line, and off he goes right into the end zone. Another touchdown for Texas. We talked about the first half, a lot of missed tackles. The yeah. credit has to be given to the people running the football. They cause a lot of missed tackles, too. <laughs> yeah, you, got, and you have to remember, too, Vince Young is 6'5", 225. He, he's a big fella. Yes. Very strong, very fast. Well, the Cowboys have seven minutes to work with. And they give it to Seymour Shaw. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. And there you can see after picking up nine on the play. Now Mac Brown is wrong, and we're just gonna we're gonna say that right now. His exit poll was wrong. He said we're gonna score for Win at 42-35. He he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's one he's happy to be wrong he's, about, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Second down and one now. And we're gonna hold it up here. Jumping it. No, 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 gentlemen, just don't get hurt now. We've got a penalty flag. Play to stop back. Play to stop. Nobody heard the whistle. Seymour Shaw, legal procedure. You can tell when a team is really struggling, a little disorganized, shell-shocked, mm -hmm. to say the least right now, because everything starts to fall apart. Your timing, right? You're yep. snapped to the line, in and out Illegal of the hole. motion, number two. Fell forward, just at snap. He's the tailback, Seymour Shaw. And he's getting a lot of snaps here lately. I don't know where Vernon Morenci Mar is right now. Well, Morenci only has 18 carries in this game. He had 17 last week. Shaw did play, you know, get, get some good snaps in the first half also, right. but you, know, you would think in a tough situation like this, <laughs> your, leading, your leading back would be on the field, but Oklahoma State knows what they're doing. Oklahoma State. Well, Oklahoma State's going to call a timeout, and Mack Brown just continues to coach his players hard. It was a combination of great offense and some pretty good defense by Derek Johnson. They got this thing turned around. Yeah, how about the adjustments at the half? And really, it's the playing with passion in the second half. And the All-American linebacker, Derek Johnson, a true sideline to sideline player. Diagnosis plays very well, finds the holes to get through, and then when he gets there, a sure, aggressive tackler. Look at the numbers all year long. Season low of tackles against Texas Tech, three. They spread you out. It's like basketball yeah. on turf and a lot of passing. But Colorado, 10. Tonight, 12. A season high, 16 against Oklahoma, including that highlight reel play that he made, punching the ball free from Jason White after chasing oh, yeah. him down. Those are the types of plays that make you the National Defensive Player of the Year, a candidate for the Buckus, the Bednarik, and the Lombardi Awards. Well, let's take a look at the BCS standings. Now, every Sunday, Mac Brown gathers his team and talks to them about where they are, and he's very realistic, and he gives them 15 minutes to ask questions. 
That is probably going to change. I would have to think he might just move up because of the impressive performance in the second half tonight, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Well, you wonder how voters are going to vote with Oklahoma and with Cal because last yeah. week Oklahoma won a close one on the road against this Oklahoma State team and lost ground in the voting, which I don't understand, but <laughs> you just don't know what's going to happen. Oh, Donovan Woods just takes a hit to the helmet. He probably hears a phone ring and just can't find it. Watch this hit. Zone read again, dives into the hole, and as he cuts, De Derek Johnson, first guy to force the play, and then coming back, Aaron Derek. Harris, number two. He had 18 tackles against Oklahoma earlier this year. The junior out of Mesquite, Texas, Aaron Harris. And the fans like it. This is a guy that used to cheer Dak Wynn down at A&M, and he ends up in the Longhorns. 42 tackles the last four games for Aaron Harris, and it's third down and three for the Cowboys. They pitch it back to Morenci. Got the first down as it crosses our Home Depot line. Over the 30 up to about the 33-yard line as we go inside of five minutes to play in the ballgame. Now we talked at the top of the show that Les Miles had Morenci, had a great running quarterback in Donovan Woods. Texas had Benson and Young. And Morenci, you can see what he's done. Only 11 yards in the second half, 93 for the game. Same total he had last week, right? Against uh, Oklahoma, 93 total yards. Loving mm -hmm. the Woods pass out of the flat is complete to his older brother, DeLon Woods. Brown on the coverage. It's a nice throw. That was pretty decent yeah, That's throw. a nice throw. Red shirt freshman who came in and would Mike Gundy tell us a below average passer when yep. we first got him we weren't sure he'd be a quarterback mm -hmm. for us and he worked his way into what he says now is an average passer well that was an above average throw from the middle of the field to the deep sideline you always hear about pro scouts that's Mike Gundy one closest right here the offensive coordinator has a 16 yard gain that ball was thrown very well he's probably the best athlete no offense to the rest of Woods brothers but he's probably the best athlete of all of them there goes your dinner invitation from the other two. <laughs> Donovan gets stood up at the 40. Pushed back to the 42 by Cedric Griffin. Yeah, that's, I'm not going to get any free tickets to the NFL game. But. Just a reminder to stick around for the Dodge Post Game Reporter. Eddie Johnson is going to catch you up on all of today's action, including scores and highlights. Mark Fine talks to Bob Stoops following that OU victory down at College Station. And all the other upsets in the close games today, and there were a bundle. Now Les Miles, though, his team, far from out of it. He's already uh, qualified for a bowl with six wins. They still have a lot to play for. And you know that Les Miles is the kind of guy, a Bo Booker, Bill McCartney protege. He's going to get these kids ready for next week. Without a doubt. Little play action. Donovan Woods looking into the flat. Complete to his tight end, Billy Benjamin. That's his first reception of the ball game. Another nice throw by Woods. I love the progressions. He actually came off the first first and second receiver and hit his third as we look at the Oklahoma State schedule. Just what you mentioned, Ron. You know, they just got down to Oklahoma and Texas. What a tough back-to-back. -back. But Baylor and Texas Tech, right? They have six wins already. They're already bowl eligible. The Baylor game's at home at Texas Tech. They sure as heck love to get the eight wins and have the chance to go to a nice bowl again. Trying to go to a bowl for a third That's straight right. year. Second down and seven. The pitch back to Lorenzi. Gets right to the first down marker. They may put him a little bit short. You know, the nine wins last year that Les Miles led this team in was going to a bowl game. First back-to-back -back bowl game since Barry Sanders' era in 1988. And you have to understand and get a sense of history what Les Miles has done for this team. The 2002 Big 12 Coach of the Year. He's pushed integrity. He's pushed accountability. They've got the new, obviously, the stadium has been renovated. Season tickets are up. But this program was not in good shape when he took over. He has taken it to a whole new level, and it's because of hard work and the way he's gone about it. Yeah, and really increased the emphasis on academics. Last year's senior class, every one of them graduated. The, the, the percentage of the football team now graduating has moved ahead of the student body at Oklahoma State. That's a great job by he and his staff. And I had a chance to talk with Kerry Bailey, his defensive line coach, who I've known from the past. 
And I asked him what it's like working for Les Miles, and he said it's an absolute joy. I love working for him. I love working for this program. And he said, I'm telling you what, I want to go wherever that guy goes. Right. And I want to be here in Stillwater with him. Well, Michael Huff is led off the field. First down and 10 for the Cowboys. They're trying to get something back on the board. Woods pass, another nice throw, complete to Curtis Elliott, who pays for it. That's his third reception of the game. Here's Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. All right, major loss for Stanford. It hurts their bowl hopes. Elliott on the reverse. Looks for the block, doesn't get it. Guess who? Number 11. <laughs> Now, this is a young man who tutors elementary school kids twice a week. When he says be quiet, I think they're going to listen. You think they're going to, you think he can get their attention? Great job. Remember I used the word before, diagnosing? He Hi saw now. this play, Oklahoma stayed State. home on the backside because they always talk about being a BCR player. You know what you are as a BCR player? Bootleg, cut back, and reverse. If you're on the backside of a play, and he was there for all of it and made a great tackle. Well, let's, let's take a look at our pioneer play of the game tonight. We've had a bunch to choose from, that's for sure, on both sides of the football, but we'll go on this one. Ramones Taylor. Nice reverse that has been set up by the great running by Cedric Benson and Vincent Young from the quarterback spot. Had flow going one way, reversed it back the other. Big touchdown run for Texas. You know, Derek Johnson with three tackles for a loss tonight goes up to 60 in his career. That ties the number one spot. He's going to hold it with Kiki Diayella. Pass, he was tied with Corey Redding coming into the game. And that is pretty special. He's the first consensus All-American at linebacker since Jeff Lighting in 83. Butkus finalist, first ever for Texas, which sort of surprised us. And, you know, those of you who have Buckus votes, <laughs> just look at this guy. He is an incredible player. And just a, a good guy, too. And a, and a, Very and nice and young a man. Really good young man. He's from a family of teachers and preachers, he says. Yes, he's, yes, sir. Uh, I think his mom comes from a family of 20 or 21 herself. Yeah. And she's a high school teacher. I think Craig alluded to that earlier. She's a math teacher, but I loved his sense of history, understanding who Tommy Nobis is and calling him and asking to talk football with him. We don't get that much out of our young people anymore. I That's love right. that. Tenth play of this drive, longest of the second half for Oklahoma State. Woods looking. Passes complete to Morenci. Eric Johnson, 14 tackles in the ball game now for Johnson. Texas was 604 yards total offense in this ball game. In halftime, they had 220. This is obviously not a win the game drive for Oklahoma State, but it's no. a feel better about yourself drive for Oklahoma State. To say you hung 42 on one of the best defenses in the country. And just to feel better that you got something done in the second half. <laughs> because prior to this, they did not. Elliott out of the flat. Gets inside the 10 yard line, run out of bounds with 119 to play. Michael Huff on the tackle. Now, Texas, of course, they're still in the BCS picture. And they've got that showdown coming out with those guys down south. Their arch rival number one, Texas AM, that'll be on the 26th. But before that, they've got to go visit Kansas to take on Mark Mangino's squad, who had a disappointing loss today. Yep. And that's not an easy out anymore. No, Never used to look at Kansas on the schedule and say, okay, let's go take care of business. And Mark Mangino has injected a lot of pride into that program, and they play tough. I think they, did they win today against Colorado? They, Colorado, lost, they lost to Colorado. But still, they're, they're going to fight them. Fourth down, Oklahoma State. Woods looking, throwing, pass. Is it caught? Nope, incomplete. Philip Geiger lowered the boom on Billy Benjamin. And he could not hold on. There are a lot of turning points in this game, Charles, but some of this good hitting has to be part of it. And, and watch, and you know what this is? This is a pride play for Texas because they didn't want Oklahoma State to score in the second half after they dropped 35 on them in the first. We saw it at Texas Tech, and remember? We saw it, where they came out and just got it going. And you mentioned the BCS winning 56 to 35 will look better to voters, obviously, than 56 to 42. That's Don't right. think that some of that thinking doesn't go into it also for them to have a chance to move up. But a very impressive second half for Texas, one of the most impressive halves of football I've ever seen.
Mac Brown has a lot to be proud of. Fastest of 50 wins in Texas history. Only Miami has had six straight nine win seasons. He gets criticized a great deal in Texas. The disappointment on Oklahoma State side. They have to feel for those young men because Les Miles team came out fired up. They were not intimidated by anything tonight, but Mac Brown squad in the second half just started to steamroll and it was all over. They're awfully good. There's is no other way to put it. They are awfully good. And that should do it. Texas will go to 32 and 1 in Big 12 play outside of Oklahoma. They'll go up to 8 and 1, 5 and 1 in the Big 12. And they are still in the hunt. The biggest comeback in the history of Texas. Back Brown respected by all the coaches. And here's Craig Sager with Derek Johnson. Thanks. Well, DJ, I couldn't believe it halftime when Mac Brown said, hey, if we score on this drive, not only will we win the game, but Oklahoma State won't score again. What would your reaction to that statement, and how were you able to respond? Well, you know, the whole ball game is really test us. You know, uh, we were down 35-14, but we knew we're, we know we're a good team. We know we, we had a lot of heart, and we're a tough team, so we had to come out and just play hard. That's all we did, and uh, they just scored another point. No, they didn't. What a difference, though. Biggest comeback in Texas history. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of this tradition. But I mean, along with me and a lot of other guys, we worked real hard for this win, and uh, we're ready to celebrate. You certainly couldn't not lose this game after you invited Tommy Novus down to see you, could you? Definitely. Uh, Tommy Novus is a great uh, linebacker here, one of the great linebackers that ever came here. And, uh, you know, I want to show him a little something, and I think I did tonight. Well, congratulations. All right. Ron. All right, Charles, one final thought. Impressive. To say the least, and yes, Derek Johnson, you did show Tommy Nova something tonight. You're one of the best ones out there. Great job, Texas. Well, once again, the final score of this game, Mac Brown has something to celebrate. They win it 56-35. College football on TBS will continue next Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern. We'll showcase the Pac-10. It'll be UCLA and Oregon or Washington State at number 23, Arizona State. For Charles Davis, Craig Sager, and the rest of the crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying good night from Austin, Texas. Now it's time for the Dodge Post Game Report with Ernie Johnson. Four teams clinging to perfection. Redemption on the Aggies' mind. A&M and the Sooners deliver one for the ages in College Station. After last week's Sunshine State Eclipse, what's the forecast for the Canes and the Knolls? And a costly day in Knoxville, the prospects of losing a game, the least of Tennessee's worries. It's all now from College Game Day Final. College Game Day Final is presented by Pontiac. And the gang is almost all here for College Game Day Final. Glad to have you with us alongside Kirk Herbstreit, Trev Alvarez, Mark May, and Chris Fowler. I'm Reese Davis, Lee Corso, a tad under the weather. I hope to get Lee back next week. Look forward to that. It was a great day in college football. We'll get you up to date on what happened with number one USC on the road in Corvallis in the middle of the fog. And guys, the dominant story of the day. Oklahoma down in College Station. Take on Texas A&M. So embarrassed were the Aggies after that 77-0 loss last year. Aldo De La Garza said he didn't go to class for a week. But in Aggieland, they were humping it. That's what they call it. They bend over and get maximum volume from the diaphragm. And boy, did they get loud when Reggie McNeil hit Terrence Murphy for the touchdown. Aggies go up 7-0. Kirk, you see how Murphy gets loose here. Well, he got loose man coverage, confusion in the secondary of Oklahoma. That's been a problem for them these last two weeks. 14-0, A&M had the lead, but then Jason White finds Travis Wilson down the gut of the Aggie defense. Safety fell down on the play. 14-7, the Aggies come right back. Reggie McNeil up top to Chad Schroeder press. Once again, the safety not knowing which guy to help out. caught in the middle. They get behind oh, the corner, oh, and all of a sudden, they're making it. Give her some sugar. Give her some good now. Jason White, that's an Aggie tradition, by the way. It ought to be a tradition more places come to think of it, but not here on this set. Please. Jason White to Mark Clayton, Sooners in business, and then Adrian Peterson made a 
showing your nimble feet. What a wonderful job of getting between the tackles, getting into the goal line, having the determination to make sure he crosses the end zone before that ball pops out. Nice job by the freshman, Adrian Peters. And his friend, Tony, loves to have the special play set up for the big game. Oh, trickeration. Jacob Young to Irvin Taylor. And Irvin Taylor's going to get loose and run for a while. On a fourth and one play from deep in his own end, Fran, the fake punt, the touchdown, a and up 28-14. You recall, he's in Alabama. He started the game with an onside kick and caught the Sooners unaware. 28-21 game opening kickoff in the second half, and the Aggies uh. fail to secure the football, and Tony Cade recovers, and all of a sudden, the Sooners booming in business, Jason White to Mark Reb. That sequence of plays lost the game for Texas A&M. This put Oklahoma not in the game and got them closer, tied the game, but I think psychologically the Sooners win it right there. And a team that came in leading the nation in turnover margin turned the ball over. Chijoke Anyanagetcha knocking it loose. Murphy couldn't handle it. Hit you right on the football. Anyana get you, and then they That's did the, get you. That's the first play I'm going to get you has made in two weeks. Welcome <laughs> to college football, son. Stoops was fired up. He was highly touted coming in. And then Jason oh, yeah. White. He finally did. That was the second touchdown pass to tight end on the day, finding Bubba Moses. Bubba caught one of those. Sooners had their first lead of the game at 35-28. And here is Reggie McNeil getting banged up. McNeil and holding that arm very gingerly. He would not return to the game. Uh, Dan Kelly trying troops. to fire his team up here. And maybe a little bit too much fire and passion. The big fella. A little too much screaming. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Down <laughs> goes Frazier. You know when you've given it your all right there. He wasn't done fainting. No, he yeah, right. into the game here, though, guys, after fainting in a spectacular play right there. Get up. Celebrate. Breaking down Ty Branion and Cody. Fellas. I'm oh, a little yeah. help. A little help over here. There's a, let's let's come get him, fellas. Watch this. As soon as expect this, they're alert for this fate. They just couldn't stop it. But still, Chad Schroeder finding Joey Thomas, and perhaps that is why Stoops is going to take it out on the electronic equipment. They were ready for it. They just couldn't stop it. 35-35. Well, a couple of fakes paying off. And here's Adrian Peterson, the spectacular freshman, went over 100 yards again, but on this play, hurt his shoulder. Remember, he had a shoulder problem back during the early part of fall camp. He had to be helped off the field, but Peterson, tough guy that he is, did return to the game a little bit later on. Sooners were still on the move, tied at 35, getting about halfway through the fourth quarter. Here's White, buying a little time and firing a dart to Martin Bradley, and Bradley goes in for the go-ahead touchdown, 42-35. to Now remember, McNeil's on the bench now, back of quarterback, a former walk-on in Ty Branion. Heaving it for the end zone, and the Aggies have a shot. Oh, that was Schroeder. What a moment it would have been for Schroeder. Caught a touchdown pass and threw one, and you know, couldn't quite get to it. Tyreek Riley also had a shot at it. Stoops and Fran conversing afterwards about a barn burner and a classic, but Oklahoma able to survive and advance. White throwing for 292 and five touchdowns on the day. Peterson going for over 100 yards. But guys, as you look at this game now, the last two games that the Sooners have played deserve all the credit in the world for going on the road, hostile environment, finding a way to win. They've given up 70 points in the last two games. Yeah, in each of the last two games, the opponents had a chance to tie the game and force overtime. A missed field goal at Oklahoma State, that Hail Mary that came up short. You know, survive and advance, yes, but what about survive and retreat? You're talking about the pollsters. I'm not ready to drop Oklahoma yet, but you have to begin to look at Auburn being dominant, Auburn having a chance to play some big opponents, win some games, and even though Oklahoma's undefeated, it's almost unthinkable to think of a Sooner team undefeated but dropping. Not quite as dominant. This is not one of the great teams in history, which they were labeled a year ago. Yeah, especially not defensively, but they still have a great offense. And I think they have that great offense because of one guy, and it's Jason White. You know, coming into this game, Texas A&M defensively done a nice job holding opponents to about 3.1 yards a carry. And I thought early in the game, that's what the story was. A very physical Aggie defense doing a great job against Adrian Peterson. But once again, the story was, you're going to try to stop the run. You got Jason White, 19 of 35 for 292 yards, five touchdowns, four to different receivers. He was the difference in the game. His poise, the one throw he made where he's back in the mm -hmm. pocket and comes sprinting forward and finds Mark Bradley, very difficult throw to make. Jason White was the reason they won. And not only Jason White, but I think it's the big play threats of this offense. Yes. Last year, people thought, you know what, we figured out Bob Stoops' offense. Finally, we're going to stop Jason White, and that's going to stop the Oklahoma Sooners. You take Mark Clayton out of the game. This year, it's a different story. They have too many weapons, and they're big play threats in the backfield, out at receiver, the tight end. That's what's 
helping Jason White is he has so many weapons at his disposal. In these next few weeks, I think he's going to skyrocket. Yeah, but it's a defense that's a major concern for Bob Stoops. Yeah. They keep giving up big plays defensively, and it's particularly their pass defense. They're not generating a pass rush. The defenders in the pass secondary aren't sticking to their men. It's very simple. You're one-on-one -on -one coverage, man-to-man. -man. Stay with your guy. If the quarterback breaks the pocket, stay with your man. Don't get confused. Don't run around out there. Stay with your guy. They give up big passing plays. In this game, over 360 yards through the air. Again, confusion, mental errors by the passing game. Bob Stoops plays for championships with this football team. Looking down the road, their goal is to get to the Orange Bowl. If they match up against a prolific passing team like a USC, this team will be in major trouble defensively. You know, I like to talk about another matchup. Only Chris touched on it just a little bit. When you match them up, when you try to evaluate an Oklahoma, if it comes to that, and you're evaluating Oklahoma unbeaten against an Auburn team that's unbeaten, mm -hmm. How do you do that, Mark? How do you evaluate them? Who, who slides ahead of whom? Well, when you look at both of these teams, Oklahoma, today, I was not impressed at all with this football team. Offensively, yes. Their offense is very, very good. Defensively, I question it. Special teams. This team, I believe, personally, was outcoached today. Bob Stoops was outcoached by Dennis Franchoni. He had a better game plan. They lost a very close game. But if you match them up against Auburn, I love Auburn's speed defensively and the way Jason Campbell manages his offense. I look at Auburn. I think Auburn's a better football team than Oklahoma, my personal opinion. I think the only thing you can do, guys, is look at who the teams have beaten, who the teams have played. I look at Auburn, and I look at a team that hasn't had that kind of game where they haven't showed up or haven't played well. They look complete to me offensively. Great power running game. Jason Campbell now complete. And defensively, Gene Chizik, this defense, I mean, I just love the way they play. Basically a 5-3. They bring Will Herring up. I think that's a whole key next week. When they play Georgia, they get that 5-3 look. They do a great job of stopping the run. Can they beat man coverage on the outside, David Green? I think Auburn is better than Oklahoma. I would have them ranked ahead of you Oklahoma. You know, I look at the flip side of that, though. You know, Auburn hasn't seen a defense. I mean, even I, was close, even, I mean, or an offense, really, anything like they're going to see. You know, I think we're going to find out more about Auburn in the coming weeks. We're, obviously, what happens against Georgia, what happens against Alabama and Tuscaloosa, and then the SEC championship game. Their biggest wins have been LSU and Tennessee. Now, mind you, as far as consistency goes, Auburn has been as consistent as any team in the country. I still think Oklahoma, who has yet to put their A game together, has the potential because of the big play threats on offense, throwing and running, that they are a better team offensively. The issue is going to be about Auburn's you know, defense. The point, the point Reese, weeks. is this, and what I don't think you under, what I'm trying to say is when you look at when you look at Auburn, there hasn't been that thing where you say, golly. I mean, you look at Oklahoma, yeah, down. the past no, defense, you're like, my goodness. There's no they, question about it. Right. Matt Leiner would just well, tear them up. You, you've got the vote. How, how are you going to handle it? I'm going to keep it right now, Oklahoma 2, Auburn 3, but I will jump over, uh, Auburn over Oklahoma if they look good and they beat Georgia at home next week. I think that you know, they have had their scare. They had the game against LSU, which is not That's a great football point. team, where it, well, it extra point, a fourth and 12 right. kind of a heave. They survived on that, or we wouldn't be talking about Auburn, so they haven't been quite as dominant in every game. Well, they got that off week. That's going to help them. Yeah. yeah, it helped them. Help huh? You know, Tommy Tuberville said he looked like a tired football team against yeah. Ole Miss, and that was their flattest performance of the year, and they still won in a blowout in Oxford. I just want to see if they're going to have a chance to pass Oklahoma, who's not going to lose. When are they going to make the pass? Are they going to agree with Chris, make the jump after they beat Georgia, or is it, are people going to wait until they beat Alabama? Yeah. When is Auburn we'll going to jump over top of a team, Oklahoma, who's not going to lose? Watch yeah, the gap. Watch the that, gap That's this what week. it is. It's yeah. the gap. It's the number of jumping, points. Right? If they can get close enough, potentially the computers can yeah. help them out. Mm -hmm. These guys will be back a little bit later on. We'll talk a little Heisman Trophy when they Look join us in a bit. All right. <laughs> Still ahead on Day Final is presented by Pontiac. Vote for this week's Pontiac Game Changing Performance at ESPN.com slash Pontiac. And in part by Singular. Text the word player to 64444 to vote for the Singular Player of the Week. Oregon State 1-5 and five all time against number one teams, but that only win against O.J. Simpson and USC 1967 in Corvallis. And the Beavers hope to have the Trojans in a fog again at Reeser Stadium. Mitch Musen storming through to block the field goal for the Beavers. Second quarter, it's 6-0. Oregon State with the lead. Derek Anderson, much maligned, prone to turn the ball over. Sometimes prone to throw touchdown passes. Marcel Love, 13-0, Beavers making the bid for the upset, but Matt Leiner goes back to his tight end. Look at Dominique Bird here, the tight end, with a fabulous catch, one-handed in the fall. Look at this catch, Mayday. Wow, Belko on the fingers. That cut it to 13-7. In the second half, you'd think after a catch like that that perhaps Oregon State would want to cover Dominique Bird, but nobody opted to do that. 
And Liner found him. Bert was waving his hand to him to let him know that he was totally uncovered. Hard to see him in the fog. Well, you would think so. That's probably what happened to the Beaver defense. <laughs> they lost him in the fog there. So through the fog, USC getting a big time fight from Oregon State for the team who came in leading the nation in takeaways or tied for the lead, making use of some turnovers. USC remaining perfect. Minnesota and Wisconsin, Barry Alvarez trying to keep his team unbeaten. He said he really needed that bye week. They appeared to be a little bit tired, came at the perfect time. And Anthony Davis, who in his career has just cut up Minnesota. 633 yards, 10 touchdowns in three games against the Gophers. That's pretty good. Not a touchdown there. Stocko scored it. And John Stocko had a great day finding Jonathan Orr. I thought that was a story, Reese. You got the ground game going. Then John Stocko did a great job. The poise in the pocket finding Jonathan Orr. Here is Davis. 123 yards. He did score there. A couple of touchdown runs. Sconson went up 28 to nothing. It's 31 14. Here's Stocko with his feet made it. A beautiful fake on the naked beat by John he just cruises into the end zone. Wisconsin winning 38-14. And you know, you know, when they win, it's not just a win against Minnesota. Remember what Reese Lloyd did last year when he well, kicked he that run? Well, at least these guys had the presence of mind to stay there and just hold it up. You don't want to run around with that big thing. They're sharp instruments. You learn as a young lad yes. not to run with sharp instruments like that. So you got a lot of guys there to secure the axe. Scott Starks and friends. Making sure the axe stays in Madtown, 38 to 14. You know, the Wisconsin defense did it again, holding Maroney to 57 yards and Barber to just 34. So, Wisconsin able to remain unbeaten. Utah, he did the exact same thing to Colorado State. There is Alex Smith, the guy who says has separated himself among the quarterback candidates for the Heisman Trophy, and why not? Oh, here's a Paris video that's suitable for the entire family. As Alex Smith finds Paris Warren to 7 0. And in the defense of Utah, Caleb Haney rolled out fumbled Morgan Scally. You always see Morgan Scally running a long way for the years. All the way, scored on a reverse on the kickoff a couple weeks back. Utah on top, 14 0. It's 14 3. More the encore presentation of the Paris video. And those wide receivers do a great job of blocking, too, if they're not catching the ball. And then once again here, Steve Savoy, 22 yard touchdown pass. Alex Smith, I'm telling you, you can put up all the signs you want. I am on the Alex Smith bandwagon. Maybe not Utah as a team yet. I'm getting there, though, Reese. But they're not, you know what? They're not going to give you a cushioned seat on the bandwagon. You might be able to wedge your way in there as Utah remains perfect. This is the trap, I think, for them potentially, anyway, having to go to Wyoming. Weather can get nasty. No you trap. Know coming up next. There's no trap. There's no trap for them. They're rolling on undefeated. Absolutely. And we'll talk about exactly how that might impact them a little bit later on. We see where they would be in the polls and where they should be in the polls. But right now, Mark, I think the undefeated team that might be being undersold a little bit is Wisconsin. Mm. Yes, they are. And they were very impressive today. We talked about their defense, the number one scoring defense in the nation with Brett Bimelow, their defensive coordinator. But how about their offense? Barry Alvarez had a week to get his team rested and prepared, and they wanted to make some changes on offense, and they did offensively with John Stockle, the quarterback. They wanted to get big plays. They got big plays out of the offense today. But John Stockle, very efficient at the quarterback position, 19 for 26, 297 yards. That's not the key, just the numbers. The confidence that he builds with this offense. Now when you prepare to defend Wisconsin, you can't just bring eight and nine guys up in the box. You've got to be wary of the passing game because of John Stockwell's improvement. I agree with you. I think this is the blueprint of how you build a team throughout the season. I mean, you think about this Wisconsin team and Barry Alvarez. Remember back to the start of the season. Mark mentioned their defense. They knew they had a defense. They knew they had Erasmus James and Antaj Hawthorne up front. What they didn't know was about John Stockwell. Then you go through UNLV in Arizona where Anthony Davis is hurt. Mm -hmm. You know you've got a decent offensive line. You play to your defense. You get just enough running. The team then starts to get some confidence. The running game game gets going. Now John Stocko's going. This offense is so much better. I know it's Minnesota. They've struggled on defense, but Mark is right. They have built this team and they've gotten better every single week. Wisconsin is a far different team than the one that struggled against Arizona early in the year. No question about that, but that was their last game at Camp Randall. Now they've got to hit the road. They'll yes. go against Sparty at Michigan State mm -hmm. next. We'll see if Michigan State is able to bounce back after two just gut-wrenching losses. And also then 
wonderful road trip to take on ferrets and the Hawkeyes. I know, they just yeah. believe. You see it in their, yeah. you know, the way they walk around. They believe in themselves. That's a whole part of it, Reese. Well, Tennessee was hoping to get people to believe in them, looking for a little national respect against Notre Dame. Notre Dame coming in with the win one for the digger cry. The <laughs> Ainge family, quarterback in Tennessee. You remember what Danny Ainge did to Digger's basketball Irish back in 1981, length of the four drive for the layup. So finally, the fighting Irish could get a little redemption for Richard. Digger Phelps. And here is Brady Quinn down 3 0 to Tennessee. And Quinn fighting his tight end, Anthony Fasano, fighting Irish on top 7 3. And really, you know, Brady Quinn looks strong here, Mark. Yeah, he's very strong. But, you know, I, I like the quarterback, the freshman, Eric Ainge. Now, watch his screen pass to execution. It's beautifully execution. Look at this. Here goes 71. Get a block. Don't just flounder out there. Get somebody. But Cedric <laughs> does it all by himself. Takes it in for the score. 56 yards. 10 3. Tennessee has the lead. Real turning point in the game, obviously, though, guys. Eric Ainge, you mentioned it. Mark, he showed poise as a quarterback, but you have to have him in the game. See here, he has to go down and pick up the ball, and the Notre Dame defense gets on top of him. He's injured in that game. He goes out of the game, so now essentially, Reese, you're down to your third string quarterback, right. and all of a sudden, Rick Carlson has to come into the game. Changes everything you do offensively. Right, because Red Schaefer broke a collarbone last week. Ainge has a separated shoulder. Rick Carlson, Casey's little brother, that is not regularly advised pass. Mike Goolsby with a pick six for the Irish. 14-10 Notre Dame on top and there's Eric Ainge. There's Schaefer. Everybody all slinged up with the arms and or that's Jim not Bob what you're Well that was the question. Now you have to wonder what Fulmer's going to do. Jim Bob Cooter might be the answer quarterback for Tennessee now. Get some snaps in practice. No more football for him. Well, you know they moved C.J. Leak around too. He was a quarterback. They moved him to different positions. Be interesting to see what Tennessee does now because Ainge with that separated shoulder they're saying at the moment he is out indefinitely. Tennessee, though, does have a week off to lick its wounds, literally and figuratively, after the 17-13 loss to the Fighting Irish. The Fighting Ted Heads, Cal taking on Oregon Ducks, beating the sturdy Golden Bears seven straight times. Aaron Rodgers right down the gut of the defense to Craig Stevens. Stevens' first career touchdown reception, 14-7 Cal. The boy Kellen Clemens was dialed in early, finding Dante Rosario out of the backfield with a big fullback grabbing it, 38 yards, tied at 14. The ensuing kickoff, uh, Terrell Williams lets it get away from him. Ducks jump on it. They've got great field position, and just three plays later, yes, let's point it that way, 14-14 game. Let's let Cunnings go back to work. Oregon always uses the tight end so well. Tim Day with the catch, 16 yards, but oh, here's the point after. We don't show point afters unless they miss them, Reese. And you know that if we show it, that it's going to be significant. 20 to 14. It's now 27-14, Oregon, but we're still in the first half. And just before the half, Aaron Rodgers finds Jeff MacArthur, 27-21. Move to the fourth quarter, same score. I shall return. MacArthur with another touchdown catch. MacArthur had 122 yards receiving on the day. The two touchdowns, Cal made all of its extra points. They were up 28-27. And then in the waiting moments, Clemens, oh, Keith Allen. That would have put the Ducks in a field goal range at worst. Still a minute and a half to go. Hedford, thank you very much. I'll take it. 28-27, Cal. Remains with just one loss. Rogers still with a solid day with three touchdowns and 275 yards. And what about J.J. Arrington, 188 yards on the ground? Still to come on College Game Day final, Florida State going back to Chris Ricks. Well, at least for a little while against the Dukies. Want me to get that? Want me to get that and take it away from the Pokes? A big time comeback for the Horns. Last Saturday, we had a total eclipse in the Sunshine State. Florida, Florida State, Miami all losing. The most surprising, Miami's loss to North Carolina. It dropped the Hurricanes into a basic round-robin battle with Virginia and Virginia Tech for the ACC crown. Or so it appeared. Disappointing Clemson rolling into town, although Tommy Bowden's team had played better of late to get back to 500, both overall and in the conference. And the scoreless game early, Frank Gore. Well, I mean, he didn't even get gray. 7-0 Miami. 10-3 Brock Berlin for he's a jolly good fellow. 
Team Jolla with the catch from Berlin. And then here's Frank Gore. What a beautiful run by Frank Gore. Look at him picking and weaving his way. Shoulders low, pulling his way into the end zone. Miami takes a 17-3 lead. But guys, Clemson hangs in there. Here's Charlie Whitehurst hanging in the pocket, finding man coverage there. Aries Curry, 38 yards. Beautiful throw right there. And then doing it on the ground is Reggie Merriweather. And I think through the hurricane defense, 17-10. And how about a little patented Bowden trickeration, a fake field goal? But you know why he did it, don't you? Yeah. Well, because Bowden family, they don't have field goals going the Orange Bowl. He's probably going to miss it anyway. Might as well fake it and set up a Clemson touchdown. They went to overtime, and Charlie Whitehurst finding Mr. Curry again. Trev takes it right down to the goal line, and Merriweather would plow it in from there. Clemson has the lead. Now Miami's turning OT. Right, Berlin, Roscoe Parrish. Danger set up inside the 10. Berlin, this is the last chance. Lance Leggett. And Ty Hill was covering him there. You had the distance pass interference. Yeah, he's got his left Throw hand on his Throw arm. Flag. No flag thrown. And once again, Tommy Bowden's team rising up in the late season. Now five and four, one win away from bowl eligibility. And that win should come next against Duke. What a victory for Clemson. 24-17 in overtime. Miami. Doesn't bounce back just as they did last year. Followed their first loss on the road seven days later with another loss at home to a team that wears orange. Oh, don't you love it when a plan all comes together? Florida State and Duke. I don't know what the plan was for the Seminoles. They I don't decided. Think they know either. Well, they started with Chris Ricks at quarterback. Nine nothing after they had three field goals from the freshman kicker Gary Sismatia, and then a pick Ricks. Another good tackle for Chris. Ricks. Very good tackle. Head in front. Took his feet out from underneath He's got a lot of those experiences. That would set up Cedric Dargan, and Duke gets back in the game late in the half of Wood Bricks. I think we'll probably go with Sexton in the second half, see if he can get something going. We're just not, we're not sharp. I mean, you know, and uh, then we, our failure to get in once we got in the red zone. Proving. Well, it's become pretty apparent that the Seminoles want 19 instead of 16 back there. Certainly the players do. And here comes Wyatt Sexton. down, got confused on him a little bit. Well, maybe so. You know, those numbers can look similar. Found Chauncey Stovall, and then he finds the tight end Paul Irons for a first down. And then Wyatt Sexton going to go to the big play man, Christopher Davis. Oh, Chris Davis out there with the grab. He'll take it into the house, 45 yards. Florida State. Taking the 19-7 lead, 29-7 is the final. There, the Seminoles previously in all the wins against Duke had scored at least 45 points. Ricks only made it through the first half, and I mentioned Sismation making the field goals. Five of those babies to school record. They were going to redshirt him but because Savia Bapia been abysmal, missed more field goals than anybody in the country. They pulled the shirt off of Sismation. So far, it's worked out very well. Some other scores from the ACC as this race all of a sudden is turned upside down with Miami's loss. Virginia Tech able to do what the Canes couldn't, go into Keenan Stadium and beat Carolina. Mike Emo, a huge game with 236. And there's been some bad blood. Maryland-Virginia rivalry, most of it stemming from recruiting. Wally Lundy going over 100 yards. Maryland offense goes back to what it was prior to the Florida State game, 16 to nothing now. So now we have the ACC standings that go a little something like this. The only two teams in the conference with one loss in ACC play, Virginia and Virginia Tech. Florida and Florida State, a lot of combinations and permutations that would keep those two teams still alive as well. As we look at this now, what do you think, guys? Who's in the best shape, Mark, in the ACC? I think it's Virginia. I think the reason why is because, one, Al Groh understands what you have to have to win late in the football season. You have to be able to run the ball offensively. They're doing that with Wally Lundy, and they're playing terrific defense led by linebackers Ahmad Brooks and company, and I think that's key at this time of the year. Another shutout this year, a shutout at Maryland. I think this team is starting to hit at all cylinders at this point of the season, and he understands he's got Miami coming into their house in their next game. They've got to win that game to move on, but this team right now, the way that they play today, very physical at the point of attack. Now the weather's starting to get a little cold. you got to run the ball and stop the run. This team understands that. I think what's ironic and interesting about the whole ACC conference, Reese, if you look at it, Florida State, next Thursday night on our air, they go to Raleigh, take on North Carolina State. They win that game. They're sitting in the house at 6-2. and two. Mm -hmm. You mentioned all those other matchups between Virginia and Virginia Tech and Miami. I would feel pretty good at 6-2 and two with all the issues they've had on offense. You get Wyatt Sexton back in there. He's your quarterback. He's 11-15 right now. Watch. Florida State 
State will walk away with this thing, win the ACC, get that automatic BCS berth. I think Florida State, at the end of the day, is going to win the ACC well, once again. I tell you, the one thing, they want to get into a tie with Virginia because they have the tiebreaker right. by winning the head-to-head -head yeah. game. Virginia Tech, Florida State not meeting. So there are a lot of, a lot yeah, of now they, things. Now they've got some incentive. Might, you know, this team plays well here. with incentive. Yeah, it looks as if all was lost, and all of a sudden, the Seminoles are right back in it once again. Still much more to go, and you know what? Ohio State's had trouble finding the end zone. Well, most of the Buckeyes have. Not seven. S seven knows exactly where that end zone is. The freshman phenom, the latest thing, and how about homecoming for Sylvester Croom? Started quite well. We'll see if the dogs can follow up against Alabama. Doesn't get any better than this. 19 straight days of football in the family of networks, and in day 10, come out of the smoke. Down in Austin, Texas, and Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma State hasn't won in Austin since 1944. So they've got Vernon Morenci now. Oh, Vernon's got prospects. Vernon's bona fides. What are you? What you are. Go, Derek. You're not going to catch him. Actually, DJ will catch him. The Buckets candidate. Great Jerry effort Johnson. by Derek. Great Johnson. effort. Never quit on the play, but he couldn't keep Morenci out of the end zone. It is 28 7 post. Oh, oh. To Juan Woods with a one-handed six, the kids would say, Griff, look at this. You must get better catch than that. Wow, it's amazing. One of the better catches of the year in the concentration to haul that in. They, Oklahoma State built a 35-7 lead. They were up 35-14 at the half. It's 35-21. Oh, look who's here. The governor, Cedric Benson, tied a 1-8 record by scoring a touchdown in his 35th game. It's 35-28, and the Texas defense arrived. Donovan Woods sacked by Tim Crowder. Texas defense was the story in the second half. Just great job. I mean, they were challenged at halftime. Obviously, Greg Robinson said to him, young man, look at that, 105 yards total in the second half. Wanted to check out the heart of Texas. You learned about Texas heart. Defensively did a terrific job. Then offensively, Reese came right back. Raymond Taylor, reverse. 48 yards, and all of a sudden, it was as if the Cowboys paint just hit empty. After that emotional loss to Oklahoma last week, tied it at 35. Les Miles trying to rally his troops, but he just didn't have enough to stop Cedric Benson. Fifth touchdown run, or five-yard TD run, I should say, his fourth of the day. Benson would now have his fifth touchdown here. He just plows the pile and gets in there. You know, for a while, I thought Texas was going to stop all traffic over that Red River, you know, because all those people from Oklahoma come down there and clock them. But this time, this time, the Longhorns answer with 49 unanswered points. It was 35 to 7. A lot of people was off the post might pull this upset. I mean, they were jumping for joy, and all of a sudden, the Longhorns with a big-time answer, 56 to 35. Texas stays alive for potential BCS at-large consideration. That's the Big 12 South. This is the Big 12 North, where mediocrity will be rewarded with a trip to the title game. And guess who controls their destiny all of a sudden? The Cyclones. You, I don't, even if you're in Nebraska, you don't walk into Jack Price Stadium and keep Todd Blythe from catching eight balls for 188 yards. 34 to 27, Iowa State now controls its destiny because Kansas State rallied from 21-7 down. Darren Sproles got loose and beat Mizzou 35 to 24. Colorado, they've got four losses, and it looks very probable that the Big 12 North winner will have four conference losses. Kansas. I just hope Oklahoma wins that game. I don't want a four-loss team playing in a BCS game recently. 30 to 21, and here are the standings. Iowa State, Nebraska, each with only three losses in conference. But I say four is likely because Nebraska goes to Oklahoma next, and certainly that does not appear probable for a victory there. Iowa State has to go to Kansas State, have Missouri at home, so we'll see. So it, it's tough to get a handle on the Big 12. Does anybody North. want to win the Big 12? North? I think they're all trying to avoid Oklahoma. Uh, that's my theory. In the SEC, this is a sandwich game for Georgia. Post Florida, free Auburn at Kentucky, but the Wildcats, I think the Wildcats have gone belly up at this point. You see David Green there finding Leonard Pope, 68 career touchdown pass. And Thomas Brown was in there after Danny Ware kind of got dinged up. This is a great run by the other freshman. Great job by Thomas Brown. He's not a big guy, but I'm impressed with the power that he has getting down there on the sideline, not going down. And Brown with Get them started. Georgia dropped 62 on Kentucky. They go into Auburn, as we've already mentioned, coming up next week. And David Green gets his 40th win as a starting quarterback at Georgia. He started all of the games. Mark Brick has been the coach there. And he passes Peyton Manning 
for the all-time record. Uh, you know, congratulations, David Green. Great college quarterback, but they're not starting pitchers. Well, how come it's not an offensive lineman up there on the graphic? If he's got 40, 40 wins as a starter, uh, defensive end, 40 wins as a starter. Because he was a starting quarterback for the team that won. How about the starting Don't let him do that for you, David. It's a terrific oh, record. I give you lots of credit. Record. We're I'll giving you credit, credit David. What, he's been a very good college quarterback. No question about that. But he had a lot of help. How about David Pop? He's won 40 games, too. Florida. But that was a starting was quarterback. That was a starting defensive that lineman. Quarterback. 34-17. Florida beats Vanderbilt. Chris Leak over 300 yards. And South Carolina had lost its last 10 games in which they could become bowl eligible. They finally break that streak. Lou getting the three-point victory. A sweet one over Arkansas. The Gamecocks will go into postseason play. Alabama and Mississippi State and Sylvester Croom's homecoming. The Tide getting 200 yards on the ground from Ken Darby. Alabama becomes bowl eligible for the first time. Been on probation the last couple of years. Croom's team jumped on top 7 to nothing. Couldn't sustain it against the nation's top rated defense. So to come on college game day final. And so many freshmen impact teams and impact scoring and impact offenses. How about Ted Ginn Jr. for the Buckeyes? He'll dot an eye for you and get to the end zone myriad ways. Back on college game day final presented by Pontiac. Ohio State on the banks of the Old Red Cedar. This was a real swing game for the Buckeyes. Dates against Purdue and Michigan left. No guarantee that the Buckeyes could become bowl eligible if they didn't win this one. But Ted Ginn Jr., the freshman on the reverse, first touch, first touchdown. He wasn't through. Look here, a little Michigan State punt. Here's Ted Ginn Jr. back. They're trying to punt it away from him. A great job just going right up the middle of the field with the speed. Gets to the outside, Reese. 61 yards. Nobody will catch him. It's a touchdown. 14 0 Buckeyes. Two touches. 14 0. But now it's 1917 Ohio or Michigan Slant State late. Complete. And he might take it home. House call. Ginn rocking Michigan State's world. Put another helmet sticker back in Bristol. Trev Alberts, Mark May, put another sticker on that helmet for Ted Ginn Jr. He got a helmet sticker about 15 minutes after noon Eastern time. And I was trying to say there was the Michigan State had regained the lead. And Ginn, able, he almost single-handedly won as much as you can in football. Ted Ginn Jr. almost single-handedly won the game for Ohio State. Buckeyes are bowl eligible. They go to Purdue next. Elsewhere in the Big Ten, Northwestern defensive struggle. Penn State still one of four teams in the country. It hasn't given up more than 21. It's not helping them. They can't find any offense. Northwestern now 5-4. They're playing 12, so they need a couple more wins to become bowl eligible. And Purdue and Iowa. And boy, it appears that the empty elevator shaft just has no bottom for Purdue. They lose another close game. And Iowa. Iowa, all of a sudden, guys, they have lost six backs, Mark. I mean, six backs, four of them for the season to ACL problems. And still, Ferentz has a 7-2 overall record. They've only lost one game in the Big Ten. It's remarkable what they've done with all the injuries. And the starting quarterback this season with Drew Tate, and I think what's really impressive is you look at his players and you look at his football teams. They don't make mistakes. They really turn the ball over. They don't commit penalties. And look at his roster. As Reese just mentioned, they're down to their sixth or seventh running back. It's amazing what Kurt Ferentz does with less talent at Iowa than what other schools do as an Ohio State, Michigan, with all that talent. I'd, I'd be interested to see what Kurt Ferentz would do at Ohio State state of Florida to have that type of talent what type of run he would have in the NCAA and it's the consistency with which he's doing it I think that's the remarkable thing and consistency as well now getting that at Northwestern a little bit I mean remember Northwestern in the past you'd have a good year and then three or four years where they win two games how about Randy Walker just quietly getting the job done last year they get to a bowl game yeah they lose that game but now this year sitting there at five and four had to replace the running back now they get Noah Heron Brett Basnay playing away okay you got Michigan in Illinois. Got to win one of those two games, get bowl eligible again. Very nice job up in Evanston for Northwestern. Mark. No, for Randy Walker and Northwestern, they got a chance to go to two bowls. You know why? Why? Because their last game's at Hawaii. Well, there you go. <laughs> Even if you have to win that one to go to get bowl <laughs> eligibility, that's still a pretty good situation. Yeah, yeah speaking of Hawaii and the Rainbows, nice Timmy Chang. Him, Timmy yeah. Chang still trying to set the NCAA all-time passing yardage record. He was unable to do so in that 69-3 beatdown at the hands of Boise State, but 
against Louisiana Tech, Timmy Chain to Jason Rivers. And with that, he passes Ty Detmer and becomes the NCAA 1A all-time passing yardage leader. Timmy Chang's had a great career. Now, he gets to count his bowl game stats, something Detmer did not get to. The 1,100 yards difference doesn't matter. That's the way they write the rules now. And Timmy Chang is your all-time leader in the record book. Uh, don't forget, we've got some NFL action coming your way as our 19 days of football in the family of networks continues. Baltimore Ravens in that tough defense taking on the Browns. 8.30 Eastern Time, NFL Prime Time, presented by Miller Lite. Get you ready at 7.30 Eastern Time. We continue here on College Game Day Final. The biggest stoppers, the mm -hmm. biggest stars. Sometimes they were one and the same on this Saturday in college football. The great grabs, the great runs, all of the places you cannot afford to miss coming up. Despite the major scare for Oklahoma, nothing really changed in regard to the Sooners' quest to make it to the FedEx Orange Bowl in the BCS title game. However, the way that game unfolded against Texas A&M might have had some impact on the Heisman race, in particular Oklahoma's two candidates, Jason White and Adrian Peterson. Trev, how did you view what happened in College Station and how it will impact the Heisman runs? Well, I think first of all, Reese, as you've always taught me, that as the season moves on, it gets a little less fluid. <laughs> less fluid right? as we get Heisman deeper in the Trophy season. The race right? gets a little less fluid, too. I think you have to look at it in a whole. And Adrian Peterson, again, with 100 yards. I think the whole bottom line when you look at these two candidates, Jason White and Adrian Peterson, it's just going to be how defenses choose to address stopping one of them. And it seems like now teams are trying to stop Adrian Peterson. So once again, you'll see Jason White with his wide receivers. He should throw for 300 yards in a game if you're going to get eight, nine guys up yeah. to stop Adrian Peterson. And I think that's what makes this situation so unique is Oklahoma's ability offensively to run for big yards and also to hit throw uh, down the field for big plays. I think teams down the stretch here have to take Adrian Peterson out of the game first and foremost, which is going to open things up for Jason White. That's why I think Jason White in these next two or three weeks, his stock is going to go like this. He's going to have opportunities in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Mark Bradley on one side, Mark Clayton on the other. Big plays, Jason White's numbers going up. And you look at the schedule of Oklahoma, they've got Nebraska. Are you smiling? Baylor. <laughs> Those are great teams to run yeah. the football against for Adrian Peterson. I think he's going to go in these games. He's going to have big numbers in these games. Even if they do come up with eight, it's going to open up the play-action pass for Jason White. And when that happens, he's going to get opportunities to run the ball. I was very impressed with the way the freshman ran today. He ran hurt, came back into the football game, ran through tackles, got some tough yardage, and still had over 100 yards on the day. All right, guys, there's game analysis and there's voting analysis in the Heisman. This Heisman electorate is very conservative. 923 voters. There's absolutely no doubt that having White and Peterson on the same team will split votes. It happens every single time you get two candidates from the same team. It's going to happen to Bush and Leinart in Los Angeles. And I think there's enough voters who will not consider a freshman that's going to hurt Peterson. And as for White, there's probably a lot of people who voted for him last year when he had those 40 touchdown passes that regretted it at the end of the season. That may actually hurt as an incumbent guy. I think that's what's hurt the perception of Jason White right now. Those games last year, it's not so much what he's done this year because he's made big plays, had a few wow moments for them. And I think people are saying, well, we saw what he did at the end of the year last year. If we're going to talk quarterbacks, then I want to talk about Alex Smith. And you can say what you want. I know it's the Mountain West, but if we're going to start saying that, that this Utah team is a team that's going to maybe play for the BCS, I think we have to look at Alex Smith. You look at all these quarterbacks out there. The numbers, the only guy who separates himself is Alex Smith. 20 touchdowns, two interceptions. The guy actually is a threat on the ground, rushes for 50 yards a game. Alex Smith, I think, is a great opportunity. If the other team's f guys fall, to move, keep moving up. And not only that, Alex Smith is a dual threat. Alex Smith isn't a guy that's just going to drop back and try to throw the football. He has enough athletic ability to be a threat both running and throwing. Another guy is Cedric Benson at Texas. Cedric Benson, I think of all the running backs with all the attention on Adrian Peterson, Cedric Benson is having as good a year, if not better, than Adrian Peterson. The problem is he lost to Oklahoma, so people have forgotten about him. And a little career achievement award potential yeah, there for Cedric Benson, Benson, too. When you start me time. measuring up his numbers over the course of the career, they're pretty Braylon good. Braylon Edwards. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, 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 that. That. Aaron Rodgers. He was another great freshman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, come on, not Jamario Tucker. Kidding. You know what? November's when championships are won, so too for the Heisman Trophy. It's still a little bit fluid, Trev, just a little. And what is still a fluid situation in our nominees for the Pontiac game changing performance? We got started on Friday night. Marshall and Akron, this is the last gasp for Charlie Fry and the Zips. Down by seven, the waiting seconds. Fry trying to save his team. And then just lob into the end zone. There's a man there. Touchdown! Touchdown, Akron! Jason Montgomery! Really good toss sweep this direction. Oh, what a move by Scott! Wow. 
Wow. Had he come out of that pattern. Darren Sproles heading to the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas State. A run of 75 yards. Boston back to throw. Play action. Steps up. Looking. He's going to be sacked. Throws the ball. It's intercepted by Goolsby. Goolsby has it at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Jason White. Looks, still looks, steps up in the pocket, throws down the middle, caught for a first down, Bradley at the 15, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown Oklahoma! Mark Bradley makes it happen. And here are the nominees for the Pontiac game-changing performance. The finalists, that touchdown catch you saw, eventually put Akron in a position to win the game. Kansas State turn around against Mizzou, Notre Dame with the pick six by Goolsby, or OU's game-winning touchdown reception. You can log on to ESPN.com. Vote for the game-changing performance of the week. Winner announced on Thursday night during our college football prime time and winner school gets $5,000 contributed to the general scholarship fund courtesy of Pontiac. Look what Mark and Trev are doing. They're wreaking havoc with the board. Could it be that Utah is this what they really think, Utah top? Got Boise there. <laughs> Stars and stoppers from this Saturday. And you know, when those Woods brothers hook up, magic can be made for Oklahoma State. Donovan Woods to Dewan. You know, Rashawn Woods, their older brother, set on the records. He never made a catch better than this one, as great as he was. Dewan Woods with a great grab, although Oklahoma State ran out of gas, lost to Texas. Old friend, Dennis Franchoni, he out stoops, stoops twice, scoring on a fake punt here. Jacob Young to Irvin Taylor. Ags also scored on a fake field goal, though Oklahoma won the game. Georgia Tech and NC State. Calvin Johnson, this freshman receiver. Well, this guy is just terrific. Went up top, made the grab there. That, is worth, that ball is so far behind. I don't know how he caught that. And then I thought the Woods catch was the best. I think the Johnson catch was actually better. Saturday stoppers now, the defense. Oh, oh. that's just driving your feet, Reese. Get that's your hips behind you. Bringing your feet, arrive with bad intentions. Will Gillison, you better stay away. Look at Matt Ross from Iowa getting a big lick on the kicker, Ben Jones. I don't know if that's advisable. Brett Mazinay <laughs> to Sean Herbert. I'm trying to protect the kickers. Hit hard by Calvin Lowry. They're football players. Saturday stop. Well, you know what? They want to. They want to be players all the time. You got to let them do a little hitting too. So some of Saturday's top performers. Look at what Tulsa's Ashlyn Davis did. Fourth kickoff return for a touchdown this season that breaks a 1A single season record. Jerome Harris in a wazoo went for 247 as the Cougs beat UCLA. And Gino Gadouli, Cincinnati hammered Southern Mississippi. School record five touchdowns. Gadouli starting to get Martin Antonio's offense. Throws for over 300 yards. Cincinnati a chance to become bowl eligible with one more win. Now the BCS projections uh, is brought to you by Allstate. Brad Edwards working from the road to send in these projections. Believes that SC, Oklahoma, Auburn, Cal will be on top. Significant thing here, he believes that when new BCS standings come out, that Utah will be out of the guaranteed money. They finish in the top six. They are guaranteed a spot in the BCS. Finish in the top 12. They are eligible. Did we predict that last week? Yes. I think we did. Thank you very much. All right, much. let's have a look at the board now. This is how it stands. How should the top 10 look right now? I know for a fact you guys want Auburn ahead of Oklahoma. Yes, right? yeah, I would like Auburn ahead of Oklahoma. And i got to tell you, Reese, I think, Mark, I, I'm starting to wonder. I'm starting to get a little bit warmer towards Wisconsin Badgers. jumping Oklahoma. You know, Wisconsin, that's yep, where yep, Bay wants them. I'm going to leave them there for right now. I get to break the tie there. Who's five? Is it Georgia, Cal, Texas, who at Utah? I think Georgia had a great game today. They, California struggled. I think they're fine right Texas. where they are. I think, I think Texas leapfrogs over California. The way that they play today, the way they storm back in that football game. Okay. And then are we satisfied? We know we have Obviously, to get Miami yeah, out. Is sure. it Virginia? Tennessee's out, too. Yeah, course. Tennessee's yeah. out. You like Virginia, Virginia there? Virginia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's Virginia put Virginia there. This and how about West Virginia? All this talk about all this bad schedule. West Virginia, they're just kind of creeping let's around Let's hit there. the helmet stickers. This is how the top ten ought to look there when the go. new polls come yeah. out. Hey, let's, uh, let's take care of some helmet stickers now, Mayday. Why don't you get us started? How about Alabama's Kenneth Darby? 36 rushes, 200 yards, both career highs as Alabama beats Mississippi State. How about Cedric Benson, guys? Five touchdowns. He's had 35 games with a touchdown. Unbelievable in his performance today. I know you think it's going to be Andrew Walter. It's going to be Matt Miller. He caught a Hail Mary touchdown pass, then caught the game winner from Walter, who set a new Pac-10 record 
four touchdown passes in a career. Congratulations to Matt Miller. How about John Stockel from the Badgers? Career high, 19 of 26, 297 yards passing. They got a passing game to go with that offense. Mike Goolsby, 14 tackles, pick sec, huge win for Notre Dame beating Tennessee. Ted Ginn Jr. He got one in like 15 minutes after the end of the day for Ohio State. Three touchdowns for the Buckeyes to win over the Spartans. And the best one of all, guys, you might think it's Jason White. You might think it's, you know, Adrian Peterson. How about this man right here? You get so fired up, you get your team going. Oh. You faint. I mean, that's what the helmet sticker is all about. He'll be just fine. Dan Cody, get a helmet sticker. Great job, young man. I don't care if you made a single play. You got your team ready to that's go. That's College what football's helmet, emotion. That's what a helmet sticker is about, about moments. It's not just about stats. All those stats, that's going to get Mike Emo one from Virginia Tech. Went for 236 yards, just sort of a school record. November's here. Championships will be won, and we'll see you next week.